Hey guys welcome back to the channel this is story about what if Naruto hates Rias part 1 before I start, please do support for more amazing content and comments for part 2, do consider to subscribe my channel and share my video to your friends, and check out the description as well, let's start the video, somewhere, on sunny morning. Where birds are chirping and fresh air brought in by the wind adorn that day. Makes you want to laze around and do nothing to enjoy the day. Now we move to another place, where trees planted in a land near some wall. There is nothing special about those trees. The leaves are green pithy stems and branches that look sturdy for taking a nap on it. Everything looks normal. Dusts of wind shaking the branches for seconds make a couple of shoots carried following the wind. It is floating to somewhere, going with the wind while sometimes flickering in the air. It remained like that until the leaf falls to the ground too. Sweep, before being swept away by a broom with several other leaves. Sweep sweep sweep, the sweep paused. And as if controlled, the screen now is moving upward. From the broom's stiff fibers, to the handle of a pair of hands to grip it, then stopped on someone's face. Yawn, so sleepy, he looks like a teenager, three lines each on the person's cheek and messy spiky blonde hair with a sleepy expression on his face. Hmm. The frown changed his drowsy face, his eyes open showing a pair of blue colored one to the world. It flashed becomes purple before returned back to blue. Now what are those birds planning? Coming to this town in that number, the blonde wrinkled his face like someone who thinks hard and keeps like that for a moment before back to sleepy expression. W-H-A-T-E-V-E-R, he chose to swing back the broom to the left and right motion. The screen now moving to another place, focused on his name tag. Naruto, Udon, imaginary sound effect can be heard like in some anime, before once again the screen moving to the back of this Naruto guy. Guo Academy Janitors, Ududon, Oheyu Gazamasu, Osu, Oheyu Gazamasu, Osu, Oheyu Gazamasu, Osu, maybe you already know about what happened in there maybe not. No. It's not about two people greeting each other repeatedly. That was Naruto who greet with still sleepy face to several people who passing him. For someone who already noticed, those who pass him are students of Kuo Academy. The school that was originally an all-girls only, until it turned co-ed. Naruto slightly thanked that. It's such a pain in the ass for always call to staff room because some students accused him doing a lewd act with his eyes. In other words. Peeping. He probably a pervert, but he's no fool for showing it openly. Hiya. It's them. His thought is interrupted when he heard several girls and boys start squealing and some murmuring. The blonde rolled his eyes at the day's routinely of Kuo squeals moment in the morning. Here we go. He ignores the growing murmur and continues sweeping on the sideline. So pretty. So beautiful. So gorgeous. As expected from Kuo Academy's two great ladies, those pretty face, their great personality, and that gorgeous body. It's like they are angels who sent to this school, is what the majority student said, well he just snorted at that. Shaking his head at another stupidity of hormonal students. Well, it's not like whoever said that is totally wrong. Maybe only 90%. The angel statement. Yes, he knows who and what they are. Rhea's Gremory, third year student, red haired girl, devil from the Gremory clan. A family that well known in the underworld. She is the current heir of that family. Imajima Akeno, third-year student, black-haired girl, former fallen angel hybrid who becomes a devil as Rhea's peerage's queen. What? Is he has to mention their three sizes too? Hell no. Find it on another source. The blonde continues sweeping, make sure to pause several minutes, so their one Isamas didn't have a dust in their holy clothes as the student said. Another stupidity of them. Don't they wear the same uniform? He shook his head again and keep looking straight with an improvement in his facial expression. No longer sleepy with his eyelids is constantly slowly up and down. He improves it with a hard effort, the face that could be mistaken as lack of sleep now is, become a bored face. He could see a streak of red hair from his left, before the so-called two great ladies of Kuo Academy walk slowly in front of him. Time seemed slowed down when the red-haired girl turned her head, showing a pair of blue-green eyes on him. Oh hey, says the red-head with a dazzling smile, followed by a nod from a black-haired girl behind her. The gesture just answered by a simple nod from Naruto makes them continue to walk to the school. He wants to say Osu or Oheyu to greet her back. But it's always ended with a bad rumor about him. One day he greeted back them with a smile and a student said he just lowly class who wants some attention. Another day he greeted with bored tone and murmurs about how rude he is can be heard. So it's simple, he just doesn't have to say anything. Like now, the students are back to normal and start to enter the school. No murmurs, no whispering, just normal as always. Well he he just starts to dozing off because one of the troublesome things already done. Taking back the video from Motohama, check. Greeting the Bishounen, check. Lend us a some magazine, check. Give candy to the kitten, check. Give the Grimry girl and her queen a nod, check, yep. Everything seems in order, but why he feels forgot something. It's already on the tip of his thought, still what was it again? 
he decided to shrug it off and going to some tree near the entrance, ignoring a familiar energy signature he could sense from long ago before leaning on the tree. The blonde janitor let out a yawn and closing his eyes in slow motion. He is ready to dive into another world where he could do anything without being bothered. Then he felt something hard hit his face to the left. The ARLIER. Among the students that went to Kuo Academy that morning, we focused on a group of three students now. Although not as famous as the two great ladies, they also quite popular among the students. In the middle of them, the one who leads. A young woman around the same age as the other students around her, with black hair styled in a short bob cut and violet eyes. She also wears a pair of red glasses. On her right side. Another young woman that taller than the previous one with knee-length black hair with split bangs and light brown eyes. She also wears blue semi-rimmed glasses with square lenses. And the last one is a girl that has shoulder-length reddish brown with swept bangs and an antenna sticking out from the top and brown eyes. The fact they also students of Kuo Academy, of course they wear the same uniform. Tsubaki, what plans we have today? Asked the violet eyes girl to the long black-haired young woman. Hi, Kaichu. There is a meeting about school security with the teachers. It seems yesterday trespassing incident caught their attention. After that, school patrolling at noon. Also, some students complained about the perverted trio again, said the newly named Tsubaki to the Kaichu. The last one what she said make the three sighs tiredly. Ha ah, those guys always make us troubled with their behavior the reddish brown haired girl complained. Continue a firm tone from the violet eyes dismissed their unsolved problem. What could she says, it's their nature to be like that. Even after how many times being reprimanded, those three always doing it again. Tsubaki complied with a nod, before continued. At after school would be another meeting with kendo club and karate club, it's about adding the equipments. And the last she paused when seeing the shorter girl in front her stopped moving while looking at somewhere. Following her gaze, Tsubaki now looking what make the shorter girl stopped. The two great ladies of Kuo Academy, as expected from them. They always caught everyone attention said the reddish brown haired girl, amused by the Gremory clan's heiress. Um? Kachem, isn't that our school janitor in there? Continued the girl with asking the oblivious question, missing a twitch from the short black haired young woman. Said the young woman now looking at the blonde, more like focusing all the attention on him. She saw him give her rival, the Grimmery's heiress, a nod, and keep standing in there like a someone who has nothing else to do. After the daily commotion is done, she saw the blonde seem think about something. Good. Looks like he remember his task. Or what was she thought before said the blonde janitor shrugging his shoulder, and then go to some tree near him. The lazy bastards. She knew this would be happening. Heck she already predicted this. Tsubaki said the short-haired observer with a calm tone, but you could hear a slight irritate on it if you more pay attention. Hi, Kaichu. The new one. The question itself was answered by a nod from the Kaichu of Kuo Academy. She pulls out gloves from her pocket. Then put it in her hands and raised her right palm as if demand something. Number 4. Hi, wait a moment please. The reddish-brown-haired girl who saw it is confused. What's wrong? What happened? and what the kaichu means of number four. She saw silently as Tsubaki put gloves to her hands too and rummaging her bag, then she brings out something and it is a brick with number four on it. Ano oh kaichu. What is that? Asked the girl while looking at the object that passed a short black-haired young woman in front of her. Tomo-san called the kaichu without looking at the newly named Tomo. Hi. Said a slightly curious Tomo now. It's a brick. She sweat dropped at that. Of course, she knows it, the thing that made of dried earth with rectangle size, has pink hue colored and slightly burnt on the edge. It's definitely a brick. But what about it? Why she brings out a brick? Moreover why Tsubaki bring it in her bag, the fact it numbered four is that means there's more. Before she opened her mouth, a hand gripped her shoulder. She turned to the source and found Tsubaki shook her head. As if telling her to not question it furthers more. Tamo complied what the young woman with blue semi-rimmed glasses want, before focusing what her kaichu going to do. She saw those violet eyes focused on the blonde janitor, piercing and analyzing of his movement. She saw the janitor yawning and starts to nod off. He nod once, again, again, and before he finished another one, Kaichu throw the brick that makes him pro-level baseball player is proud. Swoosh. Bam thud. Bull's eye. Hiya. This time some students are screaming at Naruto who's sprawling on the ground. Amo is now looking at the situation with gapping mouth, missing the Kaichu and Tsubaki doing high five. Let's go, Miguri. Nothing less she only could nod with a dumbfounded expression before following the short black-haired young woman. What the? Hell. Is the only thing what Naruto thought. He knew something will happen. He knew she threw something at him. But come on. A brick and why the hell it so damn hurts. Janitor-san. You're bleeding. Are you okay what would happen to you? Said some student at him. Ah the nice lady in there. Let this unfortunate victim tell you something. First. The fact that you said I'm bleeding is clearly shown that I'm not okay. Second. 
If you want to know what happened to me, nothing. It's just a normal thing that I always bleeding from my head. It's not like a brick near your right foot that still has my blood there is related to what happened here. He actually seriously wants to say that. But the thought of many trouble things like another bad rumor about him increased make him stop. What happened? Another female voice comes to the scene. And the culprit come to the show thought Naruto who his face still on the ground. Ah, sound a kaiju. It's terrible. Janitor sent suddenly falling down and he's bleeding. The girl that has a role as cannon fodder this time is explained. And well finally. We have the kaiju's name here. My C said the newly named sound is now looking at the blonde. What's with that not interested tone? Don't worry. We the student council will take it from here. I think you should go to your call now said Sona professionally. Ah. Okay then said the cannon fodder before going back to the school. Oi oi oi. Why are you leaving me just like that? Is this what they call acting as a good person to boost their own popularity? The situation is now back to normal they back to chat, laughing, and greeting to another student. Ignoring their academy's janitor who's sprawling on the side of the road behind Kuo High School's student council members. Wake up. Said Sona to the blonde. Naruto turning his head to the left. He could see her soft blue colored panties between those legs. Before planting back his face to the ground. Tsubaki, give me another. Fine. Fine. I'm waking up now. Cut the blonde before the kaiju in front of him finished her sentence. He rose up from the ground and panting dust in his clothes and pants. His blue eyes are looking at violet eyes directly before sighing tiredly. Geez here I am trying to relax for a minute and then, someone was throwing me a brick to my head, said Naruto with deadpan tone. Ara, good for you isn't it? For receiving a love tap in the morning. Asked Sona with clearly fake smile. What are you, a sadist? Where's the part of love taps at this? The blonde pointed his bleeding head. Then how about a reminder? For your job her fake smile is gone, replaced by flat stare to the janitor. Answered the gesture, Naruto give her the same expression. Ha. A reminder. For what? To listening to your other gibberish, Kaichu-san. A twitch in Sona's eyebrows. R is one of the staff of our academy is this forgetful. I don't know if I have to report this to the teachers. The fact that your tiny brain already gave a task by one of the lovely student council yesterday. Janitor-san. Now it's Naruto's eyebrows that twitched. And what is this task? Oh please tell me this helpless person, because there isn't a slight memory in my head about the so-called one of the lovely student council. That's so pitiful of you, for I only have a short memory capacity. No wonder you couldn't remember to make sure lock the gate when the bell is rings. Instead trying to sleep like a homeless goon. He tries to retort that, his mouth already open to deny whatever the young woman in front of him said. Only a certain memory about him, who half asleep is given an order by Sona to lock the gate today, because the usual teacher is having an accident. Of course I remember about locking the gate. I'm just taking a nap for a bit. Wow ignoring your pathetic attempt to lie. How could you stay awake after doing the so-called nap of yours? Given the information from my source that you could doze off for hours with only leaning in some place. Ah, I think I remember some animal that has the same trait. Like a sloth. Thank you, I know I'm cute that make all the girls fall for me. And for your question it's easy, just tell the stalker that it's a talent. I get it when I always listening a nag from a certain person. That person must be so wise, for always lecturing an old pervert with youngster skin. What? A pervert. This is rich to hear it from its son 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 dear sis Khan who always says one e sama should this and one e sama should that. My flabbergasted level is up with this. It's better than a lolican. Oh, I'm sorry if I don't have the same sick fetish like you, but I really want to know, how do you feel to chase a five years old child skirt? I have to fill the detail before throw you into a jail. I don't know it myself. The fact that some idiot could mistake an alolican for a pedophile. That was a big fail. Listen here lost lamb. Lolican is a fantasy boss. The two keep bickering with great restraint of their anger, leaving Tsubaki who looking at them like on daytime TV drama and still gapping mouth Tomo with eyes open wide. The reddish brown haired girl shook her head, finally wake from the unexpected sight of her kaiju, before turning her head to Tsubaki. Uh, Fuku kaiju. What are I mean, kaiju is. The one who is being called turning her head to Tomo. Tomo san, I think you should ask it to Kaichu herself later, said Tsubaki with cool demeanor, before looking back at the bickering duo. Hi, she doesn't get it. Why can't Tsubaki just tell her right now? She shook her head, deciding to put the matter for another time. Looking at her watch, she saw it's almost time for school bells to be ringed. Ah, I think we should go now. Or we'll gonna be late, said Tomo to the Fuku Kaichu. Missing a glint appeared in Naruto and Sona's eyes. Time seemed slowed down. Sona who heard her cowhide's advice, already opened her mouth in slow motion. But she made a mistake to see Naruto eyes that focused on behind her with a frightened expression. An instinct, she turned her head. Still in slow motion. Missing Naruto who give her a troll face. Teddy bear panties. Those words are like a bullet that fired into her ear. 
the three words that can be heard before being processed by her brain, then unlocking some memories in the past. Teddy, 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 B-E-A-R panties. Wink. Said a younger Sona while strike posing as magical girls with humiliated expression on her face. She currently wears bear-shaped ears, loose brown shirt, and white panties with cartoonish bear face that printed on it. Meanwhile a younger Naruto was laughing hard in front of her, and beside him is a slightly older looking Sauna who has a star on her eyes. Those embarrassing scenes shone in her head that makes a red hue appeared in her face. She quickly turned her head, mouth already opened before being interrupted. Bing dong dang dong, wah wah, well. What do you know, times sure go fast. I'm sorry to inform you that I still have something to do, said Naruto who start walking to the gate direction. Ah don't all of you have a class to go. I'm sure a role model as the student council wouldn't make some bad impression to the teacher now. Jaini he waving his right hand without looking back. Didn't see Sona who still blushing give him a death glare. DCH is the only sound that coming from her mouth before turning and start walked into the school. She keeps walking and didn't look back. Thinking a hundred plans to pay back the blonde janitor. Until she hears a maniacal laughter. Ahahaha. And that was my 349th victory. You should already know that you will never win against the great Namika's Naruto-sama. Sona Tan. Wahaha, bam, thud, thank you, Fuku Kaichu, you're welcome Kaichu, another high five to their silent victory. Meanwhile a pair of brown eyes looking at the gesture with deadpan stare behind them. Ugh my head, the moment he awake, Naruto found himself in the school nurse's room. He tries to remember the recent things that happened to him. Then a flash about a brick, soft blue panties, and another brick resurfaced from his head. DCH, that brat. How dare she watered the brick with holy water, no wonder it feels so hurt. He looks at the window near him. Knowing it's already afternoon when he saw the sun position. Well actually, there's a clock that showed 4pm in the window reflection. So he knows for sure that it's already afternoon. But the sigh, he rose from the bed and tidying it up. He checks whether his stuff's still there and no one are gone. Then he found something in his pocket. It's a note. You overslept again, moron. What a hassle that I have to send one of the students to get the gate key so all the students could go home. Whatever. Meet me at the student council room after you wake up. Sloth. Sauna. The blonde can't be helped twitched from the first sentence to the last one. That. Damned. Brat, isn't she herself who made me unconscious. He scratched his hair with frustration before let out another sigh. Better to go now than have to listening her nag again. But that, he starts to walk out from there and go to the student council room. Knock knock, come in, the door open from outside, before revealing Naruto who have a flat stare at the person in front of him. If only he could see her behind those mountain stacks of paper. I'll come back later, wait, Naruto compiled it. He saw Sona rose up and then walk around the desk. She keeps staring at him with calculating gaze before sighing. What's with that it can't be helped then sigh. He saw the young woman in front of him pulled out something from her pocket. The gesture makes him tensed, increasing his awareness if she would throw another brick at him. But it seems he's wrong, because he saw a note instead. Here. It's a list that you must buy, and here she rummaging her other pocket him. Where is the money again ah? It's at Tsubaki. His stare couldn't be drier than that. He massages his forehead and lets out a desperate sigh. You call me here only for doing something like this. The pair of violet eyes blinking at him. Twice. Yes. His body trembled beyond rage. Hands clenching tightly. You, you. It's for school's necessity. The blonde takes steps to the front, grab the note harshly and read it. He wants to say something. Mouth already opened, but there nothing comes out from it. Only another tired sigh that out from him. Just give me the money and I'll go. Understood. Wait a minute here, I'll go find Tsubaki and ask the money now. But that, she out from there. Naruto stood still in there, looking at the door for minutes before turning back to the pile of paper on Sona's desk. Another extra work then. His hand reached out and white bluish magical array can be seen from above the papers. In another place. Now we see Naruto who walking while reading a manga and sometimes. He has this perverted giggle that out from his mouth. He keeps focusing on the manga, ignoring many eyes that sent towards him. Some confused, some afraid, some disgusted, and some eyes are filled with lust. Don't ask about the last one. He keeps doing that while showered by red hue from the sun, meaning it's when the day would change become night shortly. Ooh. Now comes to the end of date event. The blonde felt sore in his throat before he read the next page of his manga. The situation is when the main hero is finally asked the main heroine for a date after promised, if the main hero win in some battle, he would take the main heroine to a date. Typical old shounen manga isn't it? But the snap from his right fingers, a small puff of smoke appeared, then he grabs something it before revealed a can of coke appeared in his right hand. Using his finger, Naruto opened the can and drank the coke. The blonde janitor feels something off. He turned to the right side and saw someone he knew as a friend. Um. Issei. Truth to be told there stood his brown-haired friend in a park. 
Hide you say and it seems he's not alone in there. Isn't that a fallen angel? Why would Ashi's after the thing in his body? Of course, what he means about the thing is no other than something special like a rare energy, strong bloodline, or a sacred gear. Well he would prevent any bad things that happen to him when the right time. For now, let's continue reading his manga. Ahahaha. In the picture now is the main heroine who laughing in some pair with sparkling effect on the background. Ahahaha. A female laughter has reached Naruto ears. It sure was fun today. The main heroine is now looking at the hero with a satisfied smile. It sure was fun today. The same female voice that he heard before. He looks at the source and found it was the fallen angel who said it. Hmm, I wonder. He looks at his manga as read the content. Hey, Ishikun, what is it, Yuka-chan? Now Naruto looked back at his friend. Hey, Issei-kun, what is it, Yuma-chan? A bright star appeared in his eyes. He looking at his manga again with excited face. Interesting. There is something I want to do to celebrate our first date. Can you hear my wish? The heroine, Yuka, is asked Ishi shyly. What is the wish you want? Ishi asked back curiously. Looking back's on reality again. There is something I want to do to celebrate our first date. Can you hear my wish? The fallen angel asked it with shyly. W what is the W wish you want? Issei asked back pathetically. Ooh. Ooh oh. The blonde flipped the next page his manga and continued to read it. He saw one full page with Yuka's expression only. Will you kiss me? Yuka asked a hero with blush and pleading eyes of her. Looking at Issei again. Will you die for me? Now look back at wait wait wait. Hmm. Has he heard it wrong? He flips the manga too for several previous pages and reads it once again with high intensity. It sure was fun today, said Yuka who now looking at Ishii with a satisfied smile. Hey, Ishii-kun, what is it, Yuka-chan? There is something I want to do to celebrate our first date. Can you hear my wish? The heroine, Yuka is asked Ishii shyly. What is the wish you want? Ishii asked back curiously. Will you kiss me? Yuka asked a hero with blush and pleading eyes of her. Now looking back at the reality. He found something that unexpected. There's a say, on the ground, with a spear that made of light is stuck on his gut, and the fallen angel is already gone from there. He stood in there like a hopeless deer. Looking at his friend, his fellow pervert who always said want to be a harem king, his dear fellow pervert who have big loves for boobs, is laying on the ground with his blood. He moves his legs. To the opposite direction while muttering. Ignore it, ignore it, ignore it, ignore it. Knock knock, come in. The door opened and showing Naruto who's still holding his manga. Osu, you're late. He suddenly blinked at that. Somehow, he wants to give the young woman in front of him a lame excuse. But the gloves he saw in her hands make him disperse the idea. Ah sorry. Be relieved when see Sona nodding and take off her gloves. The kaiju grab a cup and walk to near the window while take a sip whatever is in the cup once a while. So, what happened? It's unusual for you to this late. Said Sona who still look out through the window. Naruto may be look calm and collected while facing her back. But on the inside, his mind is thinking how to escape the situation. Hum on Naruto. Think. You can't tell her that you went to another town just for to get a rare magical girl Milky Spiral 7 alternative figurines. He took a deep breath and coughs two times. I was scouting in Samaria. There's a big number of the fallen angels that come to this town. And it seems they are after something or some things. Naruto. You. Are. Awesome. Oh for that matter, I already heard it from someone else said Sona. Still sipping her drink. It seems whatever there is still hot. A few minutes passed with silence in there, though Naruto who stood still, have contemplating looks on his face. Ah oh no, what is it? No, that it's just when I going back to here well read this manga Naruto show, and pointed the manga in his hand. I saw a say with this cute girl, who what about it? Asked Sona half-hearted while blowing her drink with few few sound come from her mouth. Apparently, the two of them are going out and on a date. Then she moves her cup to near her mouth. Then, after watching for minutes I feel bored and can't he help too curious about what happened next in this manga. So I read it a little and before I know, mm him she drinks the whatever in that cup. The girl stab him, Hugh to spit out her drink. The blonde sees Sona coughing a few times before turn back and give him a disbelieved looks. She what? She stabbed him, it seems he was wrong after all, for told her about what happened earlier. Just look at that glare oh no. This is bad. The young woman in front of him has quickly put her gloves again and already rummaging something in the cabinet. It's not like he can't dodge everything she throws at him. But you know, sometimes you just have to let a girl hit you. It's for comedy service. Yeah sometimes, life isn't that fair. Wait a minute Sona. Calm down and please it in for that brick. The cowering in fear doesn't want to taste the damnable holy brick again. And why should I listen to you? It's because everything is already controlled. She put the brick on her desk before giving him her coldest stare. Explain. Now, Naruto turned his head and saw the damnable brick is no longer in Sona's hand. He stood up with still gazing on the brick. Looking at Wary because he could sense something holy about it. Now. Okay okay. You don't have to yell. 
Jeez, he cleared his throat. What I mean is, I think the Grimmery girl is made to say as her peerage, or is? Yeah. That girl. Because not long after I walk away I mean, going to report it to you. I could sense her energy Mira say. So it's possible that she is reincarnated him into a devil and adds him to her peerage. Ignoring the slip, Sona seems calm a bit after hearing that. She processes the information once again and found something off from it. And why would she do that? What make you sure that Ria's would add a say to her peerage? Maybe because of his sacred gear. Sacred gear? He has one. Well, from what I put one and one together. I sense a say seem have something similar like one of your pawn. Oh what is his name again? Saki. Sadie. Sanji. Saji. And what do you? The young women held her question and think a bit about what the blonde janitor said. Saji have a sacred gear called Absorption Line, one of several sacred gears which hold the soul of Ritra, the black dragon. So that means, don't tell me, yeah. Issei has a sacred gear that related to a dragon. And a strong one too if it could make a fallen angel afraid of the possibilities. She quite shocked about that. To think someone like Haidu Issei could possess a powerful sacred gear. Furthermore, Ria seems is the one who gets it. The tired sigh out from Sona's mouth, she moves to sit on near chair and massage her forehead. She keeps silent like that, ignoring Naruto who start to read his manga again. Suddenly she straightens up, eyes focusing on the blonde. Wh what? He can be helped slightly intimidated by how she looks at him. Those eyes, those violet eyes are screaming trouble for him. Tell me something, Namikas. From the way you explain it to me. You seem know about Issei's sacred gear for a while. So, since when? Huh? Oh, about that. I already know it around one month Agwitwaitwit. Why are you still want to throw that thing at me? I already explained it didn't I. He cowered again, using his manga as a shield to his head. Then explain once again about why you didn't tell me about that information. And what would you do with it? Want to make him yours peerage. With what? Don't you only have one rook, one bishop, and three pawns left? A young woman who wears red rim glasses stopped. That's right. Even if she wants to add him to her peerages, how she does it? Saji need four pawns to reincarnate him. And if what the blonde in front her said about how powerful is say sacred gear is true. I think I'll go home now she stands up from the chair and walks to front him. Then, a white bluish magic symbol appeared under her. Yeah I think you need that. Oh, and where I should put your order. Said Naruto who showing a scroll from nowhere. Near the cabinet what Sona said before white light engulfed her. And she goes like that. Not even a thank you, no good night, and no see you later. Even some errand boy deserves that. He walks to where the young woman with violet eyes said and opened the scroll. Hi. A puff of smoke come into the view, then a different kind of thing appeared in front of Naruto. He walks into the kaiju's desk, looking at the brick who gives him so much pain with a nasty glare. He opened another scroll and put the white content on above the damnable brick. Fuin. With another puff of smoke, the brick is gone. Naruto clapped twice before put his hands together in praying motion. May our path never cross again. He stopped the gesture before closing his eyes a moment. And when he opened it back, gone the blue color of his eyes. Being replaced by purple. He looks at his surround, sensing if there's anyone who could interrupt what he will do. Okay, it seems there's no one else in the school. He snapped his fingers. Another white bluish magic symbol now glowing above on the same desk, then a pile of papers appeared from it. With little illusion and someone fatigues on doing job, anybody won't realize if their work are less than it should be. The blonde walk around it and sat on the chair before pick one of those paper and read it. Let's see swimming club budget how well it should be like. Alone in the student council room. The blonde janitor writes and fills the necessary things for each of those papers. Solving Kuo Academy's problems with the best solution and keep doing it without complaining. Yosh. Next is, before he finished what he wants to say, a flash of white light appeared in front of him. After it gone, he looks what in the front. It's Sona. What are you doing? Wawa. No. This. A young woman is ignoring his panic gesture and grab one of the papers and read it. The paperwork, and it's directed to Kuo's student council. She looks at the solution request box part and impressed what is written in it. Namikas. Sona said it with unreadable tone, makes Naruto who halfway to sneak out from there stopped. He turned around, facing the back of her. Ahahaha, yo you know. Th this isn't like you see said Naruto nervously. Do I have to say it? It was clear that she wants an explanation from what he did. Naruto who understand it just give what she wants. Yeah I'm the one who fills it, why? The blonde let out another sigh. It's already become a habit for the two if they always together. Whether in public, meeting, or even if they just passing by, the two always let out a sigh. Maybe it's because they understand each other. But in what? He doesn't know it himself. Recently, your family clan has a problem right? And as the heiress, you have to take a big part for resolving it. So what? Asks Sona still not facing the blonde. So you could get a rest, idiot. Her violet eyes widened a second after heard that. 
Well, it's not like Naruto could see it. I don't understand. As an heiress of Citri clan, I have to prioritize to solve any kind of problem in my clan first. One or two night for not resting is normal for me. This why a brad is muttered Naruto before continued with honest tone. It's because I'm worried about you, eh? You have to work as student council in the morning and as Citri's heiress at night. No matter how sturdy a devil's body is, their mind is the same as a human. Even with a little stress, it could affect their body, I see. A nod comes from Naruto, satisfied she understand it. But, work is work. If it isn't I, then there won't be any meaning to do it. Naruto frowned at that. Didn't she hear it before, that he is worried about her? You. Well Sona interrupted. If you want to help me that badly no she shook her head, correcting herself about what she want to say. Namikas. From now on, at after school. You'll help me to finish all the student council's paperwork in here until the Citri's clan problem is solved. It makes the blonde still disagree. Isn't it just same as making her work? Boo. And I take no for that. His hands clenched and body trembled. Ah you that's God. He scratches his hair furiously and then slouched tiredly. Fine. Naruto walk forward in her direction with a dejected face. Don't want anything else than finish those paperworks. Wait. Just two steps from where he stood, Sona stopped him. What? Could you make a tea for me? I'm thirsty. Naruto muttered some unintelligent words before turning back. And walked to the door. Wait, now what? He snapped without looking back. His hand is already on the doorknob. Thank you Naruto. His eyes widened at that honest words of her. He actually never heard that a young woman with short black hair say his name again since three years ago, when she just entered this school. He smiled and lets out a soft snort before opened the door. Hi hi. The blonde goes out from that room, and without looking back he continued what he said before closed the door. My King Sama, maybe if Naruto looking back and pay more attention to the window, he should see that beautiful smile in Sona's red tint face. Aichu, what is he doing in here? The one who said it is a young man with short blonde hair and grey eyes who wears the Kuo Academy boy's school uniform. Behind him, there are five other people including Tsubaki and Tamo. About why the male student said that question, it's because currently he sees someone that not belongs to Kuo Academy student council. Naruto, the janitor. Osu, greet the spiky blonde without looking the questioner, still focused doing those paperworks in front him. You know. I think I'm regretting to help you in the morning now. Why can't I just do this at after school like yesterday? Ask Naruto to Sona while answering some request on the paper. Didn't you hear me before? We have a meeting with all of the teachers later Sona explained calmly. But I can't take a nap because of it. Why Naruto? You can take it as much as you want later at night. But, but, it's different. How so? Because that's called sleeping. Not a nap. It sounds same to me. You don't get it do you? Listen, a nap will give you a blessed feeling instead sleeping who only happened because of tired. With a nap, your body know when works best for them, but sleeping is only keep late in there and only wake up after more than two hours. Moreover, you could only take a nap when lazing around, instead sleeping because you have nothing to do. Do you understand now? No, why not? I already explained it to you didn't I, so why? Because it sounds same to me. You don't get it do you? Listen, a nap will give you a blessed feeling instead sleeping who only happened because of tired. With a nap, your body know when works best for them, but sleeping is only keep late in there and only wake up after more than two hours. Moreover, you could only take a nap when lazing around, instead sleeping because you have nothing to do. Do you understand now? No, why not? I already explained it to you didn't I? So why? Because it sounds same to me. You don't get it do you? Listen, a nap will give you a blessed feeling instead sleeping who only happened because of tired. With a nap, your body know when works best for them, but sleeping is only keep late in there and only wake up after more than two hours. Moreover, you could only take a nap when lazing around, instead sleeping because you have nothing to do. Do you understand now? No, why not? I already explained it to you didn't I? So why? Because it sounds. And it just repeated again and again. The two keep talking with calm flat tone. Ignoring all those dumbfounded stares from other people in that room. Ano Kaichu? Asked the short blonde who wake from those hypnotic conversation after heard it about 10th times. Ah sorry Saji. As you can see, he's doing school's paperwork with me said Sona to the newly named Saji. Didn't see those disbelief looks from the group. And Naruto, stop whining and finish that works already. Which answered with lazy hai from the spiky blonde janitor. Sauna. I'm already done with all school club's request about club's equipment and room arrangement problems. Now I'm going to finish the new club member registrations. Sona turned her head to Naruto and says thanks before back to doing her part. The others look at how their Kaichu and Kuo Academy's janitor exchanging a nonchalant conversation to professional workaholic demeanor. But despite all the odds, there's one thing that make them curious. Why Kaichu calls him with his given name. But Kaichu, why are you letting Namika-san doing it? He's only a janitor you know, and what if he made a mistake? 
said a young girl with white hair that reaches an inch past her shoulder and blue-green eyes. The question itself is answered by a smirk from Sona. Then, why don't see it yourself? His work is, each member of Kuo student council member does what their kaiju says. They grab one then sweat dropped after read what was in it. Request, kendo club request for a new set of equipment. We can't let Kibasama's skin to be soiled by those germs. Answer, don't worry, I think just clean the equipment with water and cloth will do that. With scrubbing it on every part over and over will make those germs gone. Or you could ask Namika-san, the janitor to do it for 150 yen each set. But if you really want a new one, you could order it via Naruto Express, and he'll give you a discount up to 30%. Request, I think we, the literary club needs a new room. The one which we had currently in is uncomfortable for us. Those sounds that super rock metal clubs made are too loud. It's hard for us to read peacefully. Please, do something about it. Answer, there's an empty room on third floor in schoolhouse, you could check it first. If you want it, come to us to fill the requirement before moving. By the way, I heard the literary club has too many books in there and needs some space for the next book that coming. I personally recommend you to move from where your club's room now. And if you have a problem for doing it, Naruto Sen the janitor could do the moving just for 700 yen. Quite cheap isn't it? Request, we think the current school's swimsuit needs some change, is it okay if we do it? Answer, as long as it won't too much revealed and still appropriate, why not? Ah, but you should show the design to us first, so we could judge it. Talk about design, I heard Naruto san our janitor could draw really well. You should talk it to him. And, it's only cost 300 yen if you're doing it this week. That's the gist of it. This this muttered Saji while trembling. What is this? You there. We are the student council. Not enterprises. Continued the short blonde while pointing on Naruto. Ha. Ah, what are you talking about? To take or not the offer, it's their own choice. I'm just trying to help the students. Well with some price of course the last one is said with slight tone. Shut up, you gold digger. Naruto suddenly stopped and his aura becomes different. The entire members except Sona are tensed, seeing something different from the janitor in fronts them. Gold digger you say? A calm whisper out from Naruto's mouth, loud enough to be heard to the others. Yeah. You're just abusing our power as the student council aren't you? Said Saji nervously. HMPH uncharacteristic snort like an Ichiha come from Naruto. Please don't compare me with those newbies said Naruto, while pushing imaginary glasses in his nose bridge. Then what are you from the tone, it seems the short blonde restrained his anger greatly. Naruto who heard it still calm. He pulls his collar and released it in cool pose and says. I am a swindler, you face faults by all those who heard it. Even Sona almost made a mistake on her work. Isn't that even worse Tamo who recovered quickly is giving him a Tsukomi. Is not, is too. Naruto blinked at the unison, he sees each of all the members who shouted him giving a glare. The spiky blonde sighed and say. It can't be helped then. Seems like I should quit and go back to my old job as a beggar. No no no, I think a robber will do. What do you all think? The way their school's janitor said it with innocent smile and glittering light background, make them want to grab, then throw him to a psychiatrist. Every member of Kuo student council is ready to say something about that, but a sound that resembled as Final Fantasy's victory fanfare interrupts them. Ah, my phone said Naruto who start rummaging his pocket. They who know the meaning of that sound are gritting their teeth. Feeling as if the blonde janitor is mocking them. Hello, Naruto all in all, master of trades in here. May I know the victim I mean, the great person who will have my service. What's with that lame introduce? Moreover. He clearly said victim didn't he? Is what in their thought. All of them, including Sona now are looking at the blonde who answered with serious face, before change to easy going, then chat animatedly. He keeps like that for minutes before closing the phone. He turning to their kaiju direction and clapping once loudly, interrupt all of them once again. Sorry Sauna. It seems someone needs me, and I must meet him now. The frown marred in Sona's face. What about those paperworks? Ah, that. I already finished it. Along with another half from your PART chirp Naruto happily, make all of them who heard him snap their head to the blonde's table. True to be told, those amount of stacks on his table are increasing greatly from a few minutes ago. How? Well then, Itekamasu. Naruto who and outside of the door give now give them a salute, and then he bolted out from there. Jai ha ha ha. Hey. Don't running in the hall. Shout a short petite girl with a pair of green clips in the front of her twin ponytails brown hair and green eyes. She tried to chase him, but it's too late when saw the spiky blonde already turning toward the stairs. The girl decided come back in, returning with the others, but before closing the door. It's true. Everything's are done said a tall girl with blue, shoulder-length hair and matching blue eyes. She currently checks some of the paperwork from the school janitor part. What's wrong, Ria? Tomo asks someone beside her. She is a slim girl with long brown hair that ends in two short braids and matching brown eyes. 
she also wears a blue headband. And the newly named Ria just looking at the paper in her hand intensely. Make the other members now focus their attention to her. Ah no Ria? Questioned once again by Tomo. Ah, sorry Tomo-chan. It's just his answer is amazing. Look at how he give an answer that make you think how troublesome this thing's to do at the first sentence, before giving an input about there's another way to do it with easier. Then he used that moment to promoting his service. As a treasurer I'm impressed. More than one person does face palming in that room. Tsubaki suddenly moved forward and looking at Sona with glint in her glasses. Kaichu, I want to ask again. Why don't you put him into our school and add him to the student council? The others who heard it already know what the true meaning of those words. Why don't we make him a devil and add him to your peerage? I won't do that Sona said it calmly. Besides, he is already one of you silently added Sona in her thought. But why? From his appearance, he's no older than 18 years old a scoff came from Sona, but Tsubaki ignored it and continued. And think the advantage of it. When he does all the paperworks, we could do something else another word that have a hidden message come from Tsubaki. The others easily translated it as he will do all the paperworks, while we could laze around. A-G-R-E-E-D instantly, both Tomo and the twin-tailed girl raised their hand. Well if Fukukaichu said it like that. I think it's not that bad, right Tsubasa-san? Said the white-haired girl to the blue-haired who newly named Tsubasa. An extra hand wouldn't be bad, Momo sent Tsubasa give a nod to the white-haired girl by Momo is her name. A male friend how that's a good idea, Fukukaichu said Saji with approving smile. Sona see all of her servant, from Tsubaki on the left to the twin-tailed girl that she recognized as Nomura Ruko on far right. All of them have happy smile with sparkling background, but she doesn't see that. The young woman focused her violet eyes at something on their back, on those dark aura that hiding behind the fake accepting attitude. She really proud how devilish they can be. A Citrieris rose up, then walks to near window, making the atmosphere like some third-rate drama movie. Well I find that idea is very fascinating. I still won't do that, but why Kaichu? I don't understand asked Tsubaki stubbornly. Sona sighed tiredly while looking out through window, ignoring Naruto who running to the gate direction. He does handspring, side flip, and then backflips with rolling three times in the air before landing with feet on the ground. And he continued run with hand in the air like a madman. Yep. Just ignore that. Tsubaki. You know that he is my childhood friend, right? Said Sona who closing her eyes now. The information itself makes everyone except Sona and Tsubaki are shocked. Hi, we have been together almost all the times, and even it's hard to admit it Naruto is a genius. Even from long time ago, never once I win against him in term of intelligence. Except if he let himself to lose another shocking news to the student council members. They knew how smart is their kaiju, but to know there's someone who could beat her, if that's so, kaiju. Isn't that making us more likely to get him here? He is your childhood friend after all said Momo confusedly, then, answer me Sona turned back and facing all of them. Where do you draw the line between genius and crazy? I see the others said it while move their gaze to another direction. Because no one in that room could look at those desperate tears in her eyes. At another place we can see Naruto sat in one spotted open cafe, waiting for someone. Near him, almost all the place is filled with the couples who flirting each other. From his face, it seems he doesn't focus on anything around him. Yeah, looking at how he dozed off like get rejected even before confessed to a girl. Somehow, that sounds so pitiful. He keeps looking like that before something cold touched his cheek. Turning his head, the blonde now seeing a man in his twenties with black hair and golden bangs. He also has red violet eyes and wears grey kimono while holding soft drinks in his hands. Yeah. Sorry, for make you wait the man currently give Naruto a dazzling smile, which make the blonde's face blue while holding his mouth. Ugh, oi oi oi, isn't it rude for suddenly want to puke after seeing someone's face. Naruto give him stop motion with his hand before compassed himself after a few minutes. He turned his head and glaring at the man with two colored hair, with still pale blue hue on his face. Shut up, brat. You know how weak my stomach is, if I see anything that screaming homo grunted the blonde. The man just shrugged it off then sat on the opposite Naruto and offered the drinks. Here, something that maybe helps you, Jai-chan. Thanks, Azazel he took then drinks it. Hm not my taste but, whatever said Naruto who start to feel better. I see you still annoying as ever. By the way, what's with suddenly calling my name like that? questioned the newly named Azazel. Nah. I just think the author need to introduce your name, so this scene could continue easier. For someone who not good with vocabulary and grammar, I think by giving your name will make this chapter better than always typing the man who has this or the man who has that. Simple like that, thank you Naruto. You're welcome, ha. Ah. Azazel sweat dropped after heard what this blonde in front him said. He just shrugged it off and thinks it's just another thing when an old man becomes senile in some moment. By the way, Az, stop calling me like that, Jai-chan. Interrupted Azazel. You dare to ordering me? Questioned Naruto with calm deadly tone. Sorry. 
Odd answered pathetically by the older Loking man. A nod from Naruto as he continued. So, Az. What are these things you want to talk about? Ah about that Azazel cleared his throat, trying to ignore that annoying nickname and look at Naruto seriously. There is something I want you to do. Naruto gave him a sigh and said. You know the rules, as long, as long as it isn't involved about time travel, dimension transfer and world's destruction, right? Don't worry, Jai-chan. Even if I already become a fallen one, I still remember the rules. Blue eyes gazing at Red Violet one intensely. Digging and search everything that lead to deception. Few minutes he searched and found nothing, Naruto continued to drink. Then, what is it? How's the blonde ask with casual tone make Azazel smiled in relief. Several people from my kind well, forget it. You know there's something wrong about those fallen angels who gathering in same place right? The statement is answered with a simple nod from Naruto. It started when I give an order to one of them to observing someone. But it's turned out to be a mistake. In her own act, she killed him instead do what I said then run away. The reason why she that, I don't know it yet. And this someone is turned to be a teen named Haidu is say, right? Just shoot the request. I already know the gist of it. Then it makes this conversation faster. Jai Chan, I want you to confirm me that the boy has Red Dragon Emperor as his sacred gear. It's simple, you just have to observe him for a while before repot it to me. The Welsh one? Yes, well, fine by me. But Jai Chan, I need wait. Did you just agree? Yeah. I'm more curious about what kind of things you you'll give as the payment, rather than hearing your reason. And for your information, I don't find your toys are interesting. The man with two colored hair blinked at that easygoing answer. Then he laughed hard, make everyone who heard it turn their head at him. He laughed for a moment before died out and looking at Naruto with nostalgic gaze. Even after so long we finally meet like this, you still don't changed. Forgiving nonchalant answer but straight to the point, that's the most thing I like about you. Jai-chan and other dazzling smiles that Azazel give to Naruto. Well the blonde reaction is, we uh, he's already near a trash can and throwing up on it. The peoples who hear the conversation are give him give a different reaction. Some disgusted, some understand, some condolence, and some excited. You best we a three puking moment l-a-t-e-r. Now we see a slightly better Naruto and Azazel who have a bump on his head. Moving aside, I already agree to your request. Now, what's the payment? Azazel who uses healing magic at his head suddenly stopped. A smirk formed in his face before rummaging his sleeves and pull out something. Ah that's. Tap, tap, tap. From far away, a blur figure moving with steady pace. His step sound that echoed in all direction while a gust wind that suddenly passing that place make the situation like where two cowboys would duel to the death. But this time, it's just the figure who walking alone. Fufufu. The snicker out from his mouth coincided with blonde spiky hair that began to visible to be seen. Fufufu a a a a ha 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 ha. Those evil villain laughter not only make nearby cat hissed, but also a mother who pull his son and going to another direction. Naruto rummage his pocket. Eyes closed and proud smile in his face. Never thought the damn brat is who has it finally, after those long journeys to search it. Finally. He pull out three rectangle object that look like made of plastic. It has the same a picture of a busty woman with long black hair, but with different clothes on each object. In the lower left corner can be seen something like a stamp, with red colored mark R18, for adults only. Basically. It's a porn. Woo. Never thought I would get Milky Way 9 and 9 rare DVD edition. Not only one, but three type of medium. Hi. And lunatic version. Shouted Naruto like a child who get their first Xbox, missing a pair brown eyes looking at him with dry stare. The blondes start to running in circle with holding the porn in the air. His gaze never leaving the so-called Milky Way 9 and 9 rare edition. What are you doing, Namikas? Eh? Then he stopped. Looking to the left he saw the same reddish-brown haired girl in the student council room before. He hides the porn behind his back, silently using a magic to put it on his pocket dimension. Then, he coughed and composure himself. Nothing a blatant dismissal comes from Naruto. By the way, you two. What are you doing in here? Ah uh, he scrunched his face before realization come to him. Ah, uh, what are you doing in here? Toto-chan. Who are you called Toto-chan? Dariko. Wrong. Tomb Raider. The hell with Tomb Raider. It's Tomo. Maguri Tomo. Besides, what kind of parent would names their child Tomb Raider? Shouted Tomo while pointing the blonde janitor. Ahahaha, don't laugh it off. Naruto give a placating motion. My maa I'm sorry. Now, back to the question then. What are you doing in here? Tomokai. You. Doing it on purpose aren't you? Doing what? She really wants to punch that innocent smile. Ratatata, ta 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 Scratch that. She will crush that phone and then punch him in the face. Tomo see the blonde rummaging his pocket and pull out his phone, still with that annoying ringtone, before then he answered it. H-E-L-L-O Naruto all in all is master ah, it's S-O-U-N-A what's wrong? By the way, I met Tomokai in H-E-R-E-A. What do you mean? 
a second-year student of Kuo Academy look at the janitor receiving a call. From what she heard, it seems her kaichu is the one who called him. She sees how he answered with that nonchalant tone of him. Are you sure? Again. That serious demeanor which completely opposite what he did, make her wondering about what kind of person this janitor is. Oh, look. Now he is sighing. I'm okay with it from the start. It's you who told me to hide it after all, didn't you? Nah. Don't worry about it. I'm just curious about what is in your mind, that's all wait. Should I tell her everything, or just okay then? Tomo see the blonde ended the call and put the phone back to his pocket. Well then, let's go Tomo Kai said Naruto while start walking to random direction. Please stop calling me like that, Namikaze. Also, what do you mean by let's go? The girl following him curiously. Naruto. Call me Naruto, not Namikaze. And for you question, Sona told me to help you with your devil's job, she stopped her track after hearing that. Slightly shocked that the blonde know about what she is. What just did you said? Naruto who expected this turned back facing her. Hmm. Sona really didn't tell you, did she? That I am a smirk formed in his face. A swindler, enough with that swindler thing already. You fine. I am a devil pouted Naruto before continued walking without looking back, eh? For someone like Meguri Tamo, she didn't know what to says about the blonde in front her. Apparently, the young janitor of Kuo Academy isn't a regular human is what I thought. The fact that she and her friends always meet him on the school gate, heard a rumor that he could do many things, and someone who known as the poor prince among the girls, is actually one of her kind. The devil. She does a face palming after remembered something. Of course, he is Kaichu's childhood friend. And knowing she is a heiress devil from Surti clan, it means the blonde is also a devil. We're here, his voice put an end her thought. She looks at the old warehouse building in front her before confirming the address once again. The place is right turning her head to right, she facing the blonde and give him a nod. Thanks for accompany me, Namikaze. But I'll take it from here said Tomo who start walking into the old warehouse. But before that. Wait Naruto stop her. Wa well, what is it? She's slightly curious about what will the childhood friend of Hikaichu's thinks. I wonder, somehow, that grins in his face screaming a stupidity to her. Creak dumb, the sound of an old door being opened and then closed by someone in empty warehouse. Where it's neither too bright nor dark either in the inside. The figure walked to the front, make some light from a window showing it is Tomo. H-E-L-L-O anyone in there shouted the girl while walked to random direction. She walks for a minute before finds something in front her. A dead body. Ha 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 ha. A laughter sound can be heard from nowhere. Okay. Let's ignoring that C-rated terrible laugh, tell me who you are. He, little cunt devil know how to talk, still better than your little dick. Now, please tell me what kind of trash that I'm speaking with, said the girl with bored tone, before she sees a sword that passed through her stomach. The trash that killed a scum devil. Kahahaha. <laughs> she turned her head and saw a young man with short white hair and red eyes. He was dressed in clerical clothing and had a disturbing smile on his face. In his hands is a sword, the one which stabbed her. It's supposed to be pained instead a smirk formed in Tomo's face. She bent her body so the head could see him clearly. Hey, I have a question. What is it, scum devil? Where's the blood? Her smirk turned become a full grin when the man realized that there's no blood dripping from her stomach. Poof. A puff of smoke engulfed Tomo's body before revealed a log replaced her. Ah, but it isn't an ordinary log. It's a log with many sizzling papers. What the? Boom. A young man thrown from there. He skidding then stopped and looks around, searching for the devil that tricked him. Yo, the white-haired man turned at his head at the source and found a spiky blonde young man who's sitting on a pole. Ha 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 ha. Another scum devil to be kill a joy remark come from the white-haired, contrary the opposite from his face, that shown hold a lot of pains. Yep. Whatever makes those pains lessen you pee. They stood still for seconds with a grin in their face. After they considered long enough, both of them moved with a blur. If you slowed down a time we could see the white-haired man hold his sword as in slashing motion, ready to parry those kunai in Naruto hands. The distance between both of them is closer and closer. Naruto's kunai is reaching the point where it touched the sword, but something different happened. Before the two clashed, the white-haired man maneuvered his body so the sword is going past through it and poised on stabbing motion. Stab, and it succeeded to going through Naruto's body. Hey, the white-haired turned up his head and facing the blonde face. Like I said, where's the blood? Poof, another log replaced Naruto's body. And, yeah. It's the same log with sizzling papers. Hey, why would you drain your stamina while could defeat someone with cheap homemade bomb? It's called efficient you know. Shit. Boom, his body thrown again, this time onto solid cement, then rolling like a rag doll before crashed to a wall. His red eyes strained to keep it open, sometimes closed on instinct when felt all those pains increased. With hard effort, he got up and leaned on the wall. Uh sir? He turned to the left and sees the same blonde bastard who blows up him. Gone that pale blue shirt and pants, instead he wears something similar like a police officer. 
You drop this said Naruto who pulls something from his back, then show it to the albino young man. Poof, it's the third log. Oh, come on. Boom, another place, same time. In a roof near the warehouse, we could see Tomo glaring and gritting her teeth at Naruto who munching some takoyaki without care in the world. Like I said, what the hell is that explosion? She shouted while pointing at the warehouse, where there is another identical Naruto who creates some barrier around it. A clone is what he said. I already told you it's a log, Tomokai. Don't lie to me. How log can't could do that? Do what? Explode. Boom, ha. Huh? What are you talking, Tomokai? Of course a log couldn't do that, said Naruto with his innocent smile. But you I that, G-A-A-H-H. The young woman can't take it anymore. She scratched her hair furiously while running in the circle until she felt a tap on her shoulder. What? She sees the enigmatic blonde smiling at her. His hand reached out offering the food in his hand. Here, have some takoyaki. It could help you calm down. Okay. That's it. She snatched it, throw it to the ground, then stomp the damn stupid takoyaki furiously and make sure the blonde watch what she does. You sure have fun. The reddish brown haired girl turned her head and what she saw is something that makes her crying that time. The janitor. The damn stupid Namika's Fu Ing Naruto is eating another takoyaki with those I am Fu Ing innocent eyes. She slumped to the ground with an I'm tears flowing from her eyes. I want to go home I want to go home right now. Is this it? Is this what Sona Kaichu felt all those times with the damn stupid Fu Ing as Ole Namika's Naruto? Boom, boo. Naruto decided, more like felt guilty after make the girl crying like that, to move from there to a park. The two now sitting on a bench, where Naruto put his hands together in praying motion while Tomo who looking down with shadowed eyes. I'm sorry, Tomo Kai. I don't mean it. Really, actually, it's a lie. Naruto did all that with the purpose to annoy her, but it seems he overdoing it now. Because no matter how many he said sorry, she gives him a silent treatment. No luck it seems. The blonde sighed at another fail attempt. Hmm. That is, his gaze focused on a crepe vendor near the entrance. The Tomo Kai. Want some crepe? There's a twitch in her ears. Oh. She's responded seems like he still had hope. Tell me, Tomo Kai. There's a girl that I want to make up with, I tried to apologize many times, but she ignored me to the end. So if I buy her some crepes, will she forgive me? Another twitch from Tomo. Good, just one more push. Let's say, if I give her two, three, let's say if I give her three choco, strawberry with vanilla ice cream and Nutella as its topping, yeah, that. Let's say if I give her three strawberry crepes with vanilla ice cream and Nutella as the topping, will she forgive me? A subtle nod is the only answer he gets. Then, three strawberry crepes with vanilla ice cream and Nutella as the topping it is damn, that was an unnecessary detail in there. The blonde janitor rose up from there and start walking to the crepe vendor. Missing a smirk from the girl behind him. Three strawberry you know what. Screw, it, here, your crepes. Now will you. Before Naruto finished what he want to say, Tomo snatched the crepes and eat it in a blink of eyes. Mmm. So G-O-O-D said the girl while putting her hands on her cheeks with dreamy face and flowers as background. Those tender textures from the crepe combined with sour sweet strawberry and soft vanilla ice cream that wrapped with choco hazelnut. Ah what a happiness. Gee. Tomo suddenly realized that she isn't alone either. Ahem. I mean, yeah. That was good said the girl with adorable blush on her face. You know, I think you could break a record for eating three crepes in less than a half of second. SH shut up. The two just stare each other for minutes, which broken when Naruto start to laugh and follow her by a giggling from Tomo. It ended with both of them smiling. So, how about my apologize? It accepted. But you still annoying, Namikas. Her playful jab is only dismissed by a laugh from Naruto. He sat on the bench and facing at her. Naruto. Didn't I tell you to call me that? She remembered it. Ah but, for suddenly call someone's given name is. It's fine isn't it? Then, how about this? Um. Naruto coughed once before stand up and stretched out his hand while smiling. Hello, my name is Namikas Naruto. But you can call me Naruto. It's kind of sudden but wants to be my friend. The friend, huh, there's slightly joy feeling in her words. She see his hand for a moment before hold it with hers. Hello Naruto. My name is Meguri Tomo. And no, I don't want to be your friend still smiling Tomo said that. A-W-K-W-A-R-D. Naruto break the hold and pointing his fingers at the girl. What are you doing, you woman? This is where you should be said yes isn't it, it's all happened in manga and anime. He shouted while stomping the ground. Ha ah, why would I become a friend with an annoying person like you? She shouted back while pointing her finger too. Is this how to talk to a senpai who older than her, you damn brat? Who is the damn brat? Don't get cocky just because you're one year older than me, you stupid whiskers. This is not a whiskers. It's a birthmark you octopus hair. Octo you, the two now glaring each other's. Blue meat brown with sparks between them. Boom, the loud sound of explosion interrupt the two, followed by a little tremor can be felt on there. 
Damo snapped her head to the right, looking at the humongous smoke that reached the sky. What would happen? It's not only her who said that. All of people on the park also have a similar question about it. Wait. If it takes from this park's direction, then that place is the old warehouse from before. She turned back to the blonde, wanting an explanation for what happened. Because she knows there's no way that a stupid log could do it this time. But why are you throwing up at this time? Chu shut up you ug. Wea, Naruto is already on nearby trash can, spewing out what is in his stomach. Stupid cloak we, earlier, another PLAC. Ha ha ha. Heavy pan can be heard in the dim warehouse. The only thing that can be seen is the same white-haired young man from before, whom looking at the darkness in front him. Ufufufu, I don't expect it that you could endure it so long. The figure walking to a brighter on that place, which is in front of the white-haired man. It's shown Naruto. Or at least his clone. But the perverted face. Naruto walks slowly to the albino man, ignoring how scared shitless he crawling back then stuck by a wall. Why are you so scared said Naruto with those disturbing lust-filled tone. He reached the albino guy's cheek and rub it slowly don't worry, this Ani Sen will teach you all the pain. The albino red eyes widened. Not because of what Naruto said, but because many papers suddenly appeared from nowhere. Making it like a romantic scene where a hero saved damsel in distress. But this time, it's a man to man instead man to woman. Let's continue when Naruto licked his lips then said. Tender LY. But the snap of his fingers, all I mean, all those papers are sizzling. And the white haired young man can only says. Boo, boom, that is what happened. Not Naruto would tell it to the girl though. And to shorten about why the explosion can be seen is, it's because Naruto's trademark clone. Yep, the one that could give its experience when dispelled. But the let's say the glitch clone for the one who exploding, and the usual clone for who maintain the barrier. So when the glitch one dispersed, its experience is not only given to the original, but also on the usual clone. Then when the usual clone got the mental damage, it's dispersed and makes the barrier also gone. And leading to how the explosion can be seen. We and Naruto who's still puking now shown become really pale. Iwa, how many times again? 7, 9. Meanwhile Tomo is amazed, never thought she will see someone could vomiting that long. Ugh, I never thought this day would come. The day when I died because of puking Bwia. Somehow, Tomo can't be helped to feel satisfied at how miserable her academy's janitor now is. Bwia, H-E-E so this is Kuo Academy, huh? Said a figure who's standing in front of Kuo Academy's gate. A girl that has blonde hair styled and twin short side ponytails and blue eyes. She looks 15 or 16 years old and wears an outfit that could be identified as a gothic lolita. The girls start walks in while looking around the place. Trees, buildings, fountain, everything looks like a normal school for a place where some devil's in it. You see, her name is Middled. She is a fallen angel who was sent to Kuo Academy for gathering information about the Grimmery heiress and her servants. Well, it's not like the Grimmery girl could win against her group anyway. But her boss, Renal Sama, wants to make sure no one interferes the ritual that they will do this night. Enough about it. For now, just concentrated on her mission. Hmm. She stops walking after seeing someone behind the fountain. A man that currently sweeping has spiky blonde hair, wears pale blue shirts and pants. Focusing her gaze, she sees something on his back. A janitor. As if can read her thought, the older blonde suddenly stopped and looking around. Makes Middleton instantly hide behind a tree near the gate, forgetting she is just visitor that came to that place. What is he doing? Thought Middle while looking at him like a stalker to their prey. She saw the janitor walk to his left and picked something from the ground. She focused her gaze and looks at what the man holds. Ah, it's 10.000 yen. She saw the man looking around again before put the money in his pocket and whistling as if nothing happened. Iwa, never thought there's also people like that in here muttered the blonde girl while giving dirty stare at the worker. She decided to shrug it off and start walking while smirking. Ma, that will do then. Someone like him must be easy to be manipulated thought the fallen angel. She walks until behind the janitor and pulling his shirt twice, well makes a face that looked like a timid girl. They are no excuses me, Ani Sen the girl, middled, said it shyly. The older blonde turning around. Showing his bored faces to her. So young. Yeah, the janitor who has blue eyes like her and three lines on his cheeks as looks young. It's almost like he is one of the students instead of an employee. The grunt from the young man makes her realize that she's staring at him. They are no, that's I just want to ask, is this place called Kuo Academy? I am in here to see my friend. Quickly, she backed to her fake shy personality and asked the question while fidgeting and fake blushing. Middle saw the older blonde giving her dry stare, then walked to the school gates while motioned her to follow him. Slightly curious, she complied the janitor and thinking why can't he just answer her question. She followed him until to the front gate, then stopped when he turned around and facing her. Her eyebrow twitched when the man tapping Kuo Academy's nameplate with still bored face. Think fast, she ignoring how she could make a mistake and made an ad lib. 
Ah ah, I it seems this is indeed the place. I'm so sorry, sometimes I was so careless. Didn't see the name plate before, Tihi. She punches her head lightly like a klutz and I'm character with glimmering background, only to be shrugged off by the man before he walks away. E, how? At least show a blush in your face. He please wait. Shouted Middled. The older blonde who heard it stopped and turned back before let out a deep sigh. Wah well, what's with that how troublesome sigh, is that how you treat a visitor? She really holds her anger when the man raised his eyebrows that clearly say what now? Dust talk already. Don't you have a mouth? With great restraint, she continues her act. Aonona. Actually, about seeing my friend. It's a lie. I I'm just nervous because I'll transferring to this school tomorrow and I always get lost easily. That's why, Ani-san. Can you show me around? She gives her special technique. A combination puppy eyes dog with glimmering background and some lullaby BGM. This move is very effective for most people she encountered. Well, maybe not this time. Because, yawn, yep, he is damn. That must be her to pride. Little bodies trembled, restrained rage that already on the verge of her limit. I this guy how dares he, Ayano could you? Show me. Around. Her smile slightly faltered while some veins popped on her forehead. The janitor lowered his head and looking at her with flat stares. Then suddenly, he point up his index finger, before stretch out his palm while smiling. Another vein popped on her forehead. By the way, that's makes four already. WH what is it, Ani san? I don't understand what you mean now she less curious and just wants to stab him with a couple light spears. The man blinked. Twice. Before he looks at her with rubbing his thumb repeatedly over the tip of the index finger and middle finger. Makes the fallen angel head slightly down with bangs shattered her face. Of course, even an idiot knows what that sign means. Money. But you wait a minute in here. I've to go for a moment, it won't be long a flat emotionless tone out from her mouth. Totally different from shy and bashful one before. The answer she gets just a nod from the janitor, which she replied back with thank you before going to another direction. Missing a grin from the blonde male. She crosses the bridge, walks towards a building, then go into an alley. Her head turned left and right like searching something, before stopped when it landed on a trash bin. Yeah it will do. She moves closer to the front of the bin. Her face lifted up showing anger with tears that held very well. Then she starts kicking it. The trash bin. Ah. You son of a whore. Who do you think you are? There's a sweet girl ask you a simple things, then what? You ignored her. And what's with that attitude anyway? You have a mouth so just talk already you stupid blonde. Also, money you expect me to pay you for guiding the school, don't you already get a salary from your boss you as whole, that's it. I will kill you after this stupid mission is done. You hear me bastard you. Will. Die. She goes on like that for minutes before stopped because of exhaustion. Taking several deep breaths and released it, she compassed herself then walking back to where that bastard janitor is. Leaving already bended thrash bin in that alley. The blonde fallen angel walks while thinking what method she would do to kill that janitor. Because, well you know, it's kind of boring to just stab him in the gut, looking his shocked face, blah blah blah, then watch how he asking why, or how could she stab him with dramatically before he's finally dead. The young full and angel movement suddenly stopped, her body trembled, and pink lights are flickering in her hand, while her expression is beyond than anger. Why you said? Well maybe because she saw the same blonde janitor is leaning on the gate. Even from far away, she could tell that he is sleeping. Just look at that stupid face. Head turned upwards. Eyes closed, mouth agape and a bubble that come from his nose. It's clearly says that he was sleeping. I leave you for what 10 minutes? 10 minutes and you are already asleep. The lights on her hand become denser and began to form like a spear for a second, then it's dimmed back to nothing. She takes several deep breath while keep muttering mission first, castrate him later. Mission first, castrate him later a few minutes doing that, she calmed down before continued walk to the academy's direction. Then another person appeared in her line of vision. The girl. Red hair that has short twin tail in the back and an antenna sticking out from the top. What is she, a remote controlled human? Anyway, the girl seems related to the blonde janitor. Looking how she does crouch start position in the middle of the bridge while heads up facing him. Ah and she could sense the dark aura that screaming revenge from the girl. Middle chooses to stay still and observe the girl. And somehow, in her deepest heart she had a feeling that something will happen. Something stupid. The girl suddenly sprinting, slightly makes middle startled. I repeat. Not running, but sprinting. Like a bullet that shoots out from a gun, the red-haired girl sprinting not like an ordinary human. Then, about a few meters from the distance between the two, Middle saw the girl jump and thrust her right foot. Right into the blonde janitor face, when he opened his eye. Such a beautiful technique that even Liu Kang from MK would give the girl an A-plus in flying kick lesson. And it seems not end yet. How hard the kick makes the blonde janitor's body forced open the gate. He was thrown, bouncing and twirling in the air like when you play skipping rocks. Once. Twice. 
and after the third time he bouncing, the blonde man skidding with his face on the ground before stopped in front of the fountain. What what is this satisfied feeling in her heart? Ha! Take that you blonde bastard. It's a payback for dye my hair to green yesterday. A smug shout can middled heard from the red-haired girl. Before she running to the inside academy and turned to left direction while laughing. But before the girl going too far, the blonde janitor quickly rose up and takes off his shoes. Then throws it right into the red-haired girl's head and made her fall to the ground. Middle saw the janitor just standing in there for a few seconds, then starts running to inside the building directions when the girl rose up and chasing him. My Korea. Middle heard the girl's shout until it's dispersed along with their figures. Leaving only her alone now, standing in the middle of the bridge. Then she starts walking to the opposite of Kuo Academy direction. FK with this mission, she would say nothing to be worried about the Grimmery girl to her boss. Yep. It's better than makes her headache increased. Noon another place, same DAY. It's around noon, we're about a few minutes before lunch's time in Kuo Academy. Now there's Naruto walking in the hall while caressing his cheek. Damn. The girl has a good kick. After the confrontation with Tomo, Naruto reaches ceasefire agreement with her for today. She says it seems Sona needs him for something in the student council's room, which leading him going to that place now. Naruto keep walking while thinking of payback his new playmate. Ma, that's right. Maybe I should use the experiment number 98751. The thought itself makes him shivered in excitement. I mean, it would be so funny to see her expression when she woke up in the morning only found out that she turned into a male. Dark menacing aura formed around the janitor. From nowhere, a shadow figures of certain snake Sanin appeared behind Naruto. Along with his infamous chuckles, that comes out from the blonde's mouth. Coo coo coo. Several students and teachers who heard it suddenly take steps back until touch the wall. Some even jump out from the window. Knock knock, hum in. While ignoring all the students who know why running away from him, Naruto found himself in front of the student council's room and entered the place. There's only Sona there, looking outside through the window. It seems, the gesture becomes her trademark lately. Osu? You need something from lil old me. Close the door. And stop your attempt to speak with Kansai dialect. The way you speak it sounds 177 times worse than the original. It's even an insult for all people from there. Also, it makes you look weird. No, I'm sorry. That was rude of me, because you are weird in the first place. Naruto just blink at those rapid insults. Twice. Okay Naruto complied her in smooth utterly defeat tone. Is is it really that bad? For him using Kansai dialect. Naruto shook his head and shut the door before facing Sona once again. So. What is it? The girl is turning around and push her glasses. Yesterday, one of the peerages saw you sparing with your own clone. The blonde is tilting his head. One of the peerages who... It's Yuri Yuri Tsubasa, comes again. The tall blue haired girl with Bishanin face. Oh, her so? What about it? He doesn't find it a problem if someone saw, peek, or even spy on his training. It's not like he hiding it anyway. It seems, she is amazed about your style, technique, and power behind the punches as she said. Once again, so what? Just get to the point already. She wants you to train her, huh? She wants you to teach. I heard that. What I don't understand is why should I teach her? I don't even know her in the first place. There's contemplating looks on Sona face. That girl believes that she is weak. For a rook, strength alone is not enough is what she believes. That's why when she saw you training, she decides to learn how you fight, whatever it takes. There's a silence in that room. Sona look at Naruto who closed his eyes for a moment, thinking about the situation at the time. The blonde janitor sighs in discomfort before opening his eyes and said nah. Don't want it to troublesome. Well knowing him for all those years, Sona doesn't find his answer is not so surprising. I see. Then, I will tell that to her later. That you'll do. Anything else. Right after he asks that, the school bells rang. Telling it's lunch period is for the students. No, that's all. Okay then. Naruto was turning back and starts to walk out from there. But only two steps before the door. Wait. The Citriera stops him, makes the blonde turn and facing her again. What? Did you already eat? She asks it with while fidgeting while looking at another direction. There's a small blush in her face, makes the heiress one of 72 pure-blooded devil clans, look like a normal high school girl in love struck. Such uncharacteristic gestures of her. Oh uh, no. He can't be helped to be confused. Just where the situation is going to. But uh, then, Sona going to a near cupboard, rummaging something from there, then pull out two boxes that wrapped by a blue cloth and put one on a desk. Ah that's one for you said the girl still blushing and look at another direction. Iwa what with this romance comedy development? Is the author changing the genre to drama? Uh no. It's still on parody. Then what's with this situation? Also, that box. From the size is it a bento? Or, Naruto look at the box confusedly but, boy, ignoring me aren't you? Still took it. He unwraps the cloth and the lid before look at the content. Ooh. This is looks good. 
It's a food more accurately a medium-sized lunch meal set with rice, tempura, white sauce, and salad in it. There's also chopsticks beside the box. Are you really? Then, taste it. Yes madam. Cool and the timing is good too, because I'm really hungry at now. Naruto took the chopstick. Ah, by the way. Where did you buy this? And silently say I did Akamasu before hold the box. Missing a twitch in Sona's eyebrows. That's, uh huh. He pinches the tempura and brings it to the front his face. In slow motion, Naruto's mouth already opened. Ready to ravish the deep fried shrimp. A handmade that makes him stop and turning his head mechanically with mouth still agape. Ha. It's a handmade. Closing his mouth, he blinks slowly. Three times. Ah ha ha ha. Sorry, looks like my hearing are. Like I said it's a handmade. I made it with my own hand from the scratch. The tempura, the rice, white sauce, salad, and the chopsticks. Ah that explain why there's a citri symbol on it. He put back the tempura on the box. And take a step. No. Three step back from it. I uh, sorry, I'm still full from this. Didn't you say you're really hungry before? As if for mocking him, Naruto's stomach grumbled. Loud enough to make him sweating bullets. I have to go now. He dashed out from there. But one inch. Just one more inch for him to break the door, something stopped him. Magical barrier. Truth to be told. White bluish magic circle with Citri's clan symbol on it suddenly appeared all over the room. No one can out from this room. It's either I release the seal or someone coming in, the barrier will be still on. Now, why what's wrong with my handmade cooking? A deadly calm voice can be heard behind Naruto. SH shut up. WH what is my fault that you're doing this to me? Fault. Besides all those pranks you did to me years ago. No, there's aren't. Now, tell me. What's wrong about my handmade cooking? It was an honest question from the black-haired kaiju. What's wrong head looking down and his body is trembling. Do not know whether it's from anger or fear. You told me what's wrong. Then he lifts up his face, showing Nditi is scared about something. You don't you remember what happened the first time you give me your handmade cooking to me? A certain scene surfaced from the kaiju's memories. There's Sona when just a child. Looking clueless while holding a spoon with the red stains on it in her face. Strangely enough, she looks just like a murderer who has stabbed someone. And in front of her, an older looking Sona who currently hugging Naruto while crying. His eyes were pure white, body jerking wildly, and non-stop white foam comes out from the mouth. Quick. Call doctor, ambulance, anything. We have a food poison victim in here. Naruto. Hang in there. Sona averted her gaze to another place with nervous looks. Oh no, you just remembered it don't you? She closed her eyes embarrassedly a anyway. It's already in the past, I'm different now. Just tasted already. No he'll no. It's true I want to die, but not this way. No god, no Buddha, even angels could force me to eat that biological weapon again. An eerie silent atmosphere is suddenly formed in that room. What did you say? I said. One glance. One deadly glance from Sona Citri makes Naruto freeze up. It seems he makes a fatal mistake here. Shit. Her Yandir switch is on. Quick. Think Naruto. Do you want that bioweapon going inside your bodies once again? That's right. She said the barrier will be down when someone enters this place. Rummaging his pocket, he grabs a cell phone and stay. Swoosh thunk. Dot. Only for the cell phone is embedded on the floor by a pair of chopsticks. The one with Citri symbol. You can't call anyone now those sharp tone of hers. FK this. Hirish what the hell. From nowhere, several unusual line and kanji words that forming some shape has appeared all over the room. You think after living with you for years, didn't make me learn how to stop your teleporting technique. Sona start walking to his direction while taking the bento with her. Half of her face is darkened, along with dark green plastered there. So what will you do? Naruto is looking at her with a determined face. No matter what. He couldn't lose. No. He can't lose. I won't lose. Bring. It. On. The scene now is look like a painting where a hero, Naruto, facing a demon lord, Sona. Yes. Even the bento in it. Be you but really, Takamatsu sensei teaching method is really hard. I don't even understand half of what he said, a male voice can be heard in one of Kuo Academy's hall. It's the same male from the starts of the previous chapter. Really? I think Hayama sensei is harder. You know, he always gives the material on the board without explaining it, said a familiar feminine voice. Ah now you say it, a group of Kuo Academy student council walking with steady pace to their duties room. There's nothing special about it. They are talking animatedly, either discussing their school's life or devil's life. Until they arrived in front of the room and heard a struggle, crash, also something dropped to the ground. Hard. All the student council members look each other, silently questioning what happened on the inside. Anyone knows what's going on in there? Saji asked it verbally. I don't know. Do you, Ria senpai It started from Nomura I don't know it too. Otomo-chan. Nope. Momo. Maybe it's Kaichu, what do you think, Tsubasa-san? 
Possibly, but maybe she's with someone else. The question is, with whom? A certain blonde janitor appeared in their mind. It's him come simultaneously from all of them. That guy what is he doing now? Saji who already angry stepped in front of them, ready to enter the place. But, wait comes from Tsubaki. Buku Kaiju. The long black-haired Megane Ko halted the pawn. She pushes her glasses, glinting covering her eyes like any smart anime character. Let's heard the situation first, heard. Tsubaki ignoring the question and passing Saji before she places her ear to the door. Makes the other sweat drop to their action. Eavesdropping. Hey. What can she say? Her drama sensor is tingling after heard the possibilities of those two people in one room. We well it can't be helped then said Tomo before followed her senpai. Thigh this is her face suddenly becomes red, close enough like her hair. Her changing color makes the other more curious of what happened. They quickly find a good position and do the same like her. Eavesdropping. There are grunts, moans, and rugged breathing from the inside. Wh what the before Saji finished, a voice interrupted him. F you f you f you don't worry, it will be over s o o n. A sexy and sensual voice from the inside. Strangely, it's resembled like their kaiju voices. But if it's not for h m p h. And the other one is similar to the janitor. Naruto. Or h o r a just relax and don't resist it. M m m. M m m m. M m m m. All of the students' council faces become red. An image where their kaiju dominating the janitor appeared in their head. Then, how about THIS? Hum. Hum. AH it's come in, come in, come e -e in. And, just for your information. It's the tempura that forced going inside Naruto's mouth by Sona. Thank you. Bam. The sound of student council door opened by force, interrupt the activity. There have stood all members who have various reactions after saw something in front of them. A A A A A A H H H Saji becomes pale white while his soul trying out from his mouth. Senpai. Genshiru Senpai. Nomura Ruko who shaking Saji's body. Yuiku Sakuriya hiding her face, but failed when she's still looking from between her fingers. Wa 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 Tamo who blushing furiously. She even can't finish her word. Ma Hanakai Momo hiding her mouth with her hand. I this is Yuritsubasa who blushing while openly looking with disbelief expression. Um, and finally, Tsubaki who looking the ground, covering the eyes with a glint in her glasses. Eh? You guys what's wrong? This one from Sona who looking at her peerage with confusion. Tsubaki take a step to the front and pointing at her. Huh? The Citriere is still confused about their reaction. She turned her head when feels something in her hand. Making her realized what kind of position she is currently. Naruto, check. Rugged breath, checks. Straddling position, check. Disheveled clothes, check. His hands were tied, check. White thing on her face, checks. Her right hand holding his hands, check. Her left hand covering his mouth, checks. Yep. A very femdomish position if I could say. No this your wrong eye. Sona waving her hands in denial. A face that clearly says doomed is plastered there. Sona Hidoi it's from Naruto. Tears leaked from his eyes. What are you talking about? Kaichu, Tsutsubaki you will believe in me won't you? Ifuku Kaichu lifts her face. Showing a motionless face with nosebleed, then gives Sona thumbs up before says. Good job. In perfect English voice. Like I said. You misunderstood something in here. Also stop your nosebleed. Naruto continued. It was my first time too. You be quiet. And help me explain it to them. Hey I C H O U Saji soul's still out from his mouth. Somebody put in his soul back. In Shiro Senpai I. Stop shouting and shaking his body. Fui. See or not see. Decided it already. Wa 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 wa. Take a deep breath and try it again. Ara. Don't just ara on me. Do something. This is too much for me. Innocent aren't you? Wow don't you get tired of giving those Tsukomi? Said Naruto amazed by the short black haired girl. I am. Whose fault is it in the first place? Well anyway, good luck. For what? For explaining all of it, poof. The log replaced Naruto's body. Sona is trembling beyond rage, her devil wings were out, dark, and dread aura is visible around her. The other who still there were cowering in fear. Never thought their kaiju, no. Their king could be this terrifying. As if a true demon lord appeared. Naru Uduo. Poor girl. Afternoon, same day, another PLAC. Nothing happened after the incident on the student council room. Well except Naruto who constantly disappearing after being spotted by Sona. Now. At a small cabin on the woods behind Kuo Academy's baseball field, we can see Naruto sitting in a chair while knitting a doll in the afternoon. Yes, a doll. I know it's weird. Even the author's little sister says this after accidentally reads the chapter. Seriously. A doll. Can't you think of anything beside of it? There's a ton of things that better to do than knitting a doll. Well it's not like a bad thing to do, but come on a man. Knitting a doll. I even stopped watching Barbie at the age of 9 yeah she really said that. By the way, she is part of my inspiration sources for this story. On the Tsukomi part. 
well let's forget about the non-related things and shall we focus when Naruto finished knitting and lifted the doll. It resembled a woman figure with dark brown hair, has dark red eyes, wears red and white dress that's similar to a shrine maiden, but has detached sleeves and a big red ribbon on its hair. And he checks if there's something wrong with it. Yosh. It looks fine as before he is putting it on his lap. The blonde man has this faraway look while watching the front of the cabin. You can get out now. From behind the trees, a tall figure comes out. Showing her blue hair, blue eyes, and Bashanan face. Oh it's you. What is it? In front of his vision, there stood one of student council member. Yuritsubasa. Good afternoon, Namaka-san. My name is Yuritsubasa. I trust you already know about me. Yeah, what are some things. So, what are you doing in here? Eh? Did you forget? About what? About you become my teacher in fighting. I was informed that you said okay to teach me by kaiju. So, his mind is blank for seconds when the moment he heard it, before the gear in his head start running again. Say again. Tsona Kaichu said that you agree to be my teacher. He massages his forehead. Of course, this must be her payback for the humiliation from before. The blonde janitor sighed in displeasure before decided to refuse the girl directly. It seems there's a misunderstood in here. Misunderstood? Yeah. I never agree to become your teacher in the first place. Maybe Sona just said it because she's still angry at me and decided to make you come here and annoy me. He can see her dejected face clearly before giving him a fake smile. I see well it can't be helped right? Then, if you excuse me. She bowed to him before going back to the school. Maybe back to the student council rooms. Wait. If it's so, then Sona must be still there. And when she heard what happened there will be another two hours of nagging session that waiting for him. It's not like he can't use a clone to replace him. But you see. She has a habit to throw things randomly if you can't handle the girl with the correct treatment. And when she found out that he's just a clone. Trust him. Even her big sister who one of four great satans can't stop her to make a plot for slow, smooth, painful vengeance. Stop. His shout makes her stopped and turning back. Hi. Okay Naruto, make this like a master who actually a good guy. He sighed dramatically in defeat. Do you really want to learn it so much? He can see those determined face on her. Yes. Please, consider it once more, Namaka-san. The girl bowed at him. Showing how serious is she. He adds a pause for makes it more convincing. I may not teach you my style of fighting. But I can give you an advice and lesson. And trust me, it's harsh than you think. Is it still okay? The blue-haired girl lifts her head, a small smile appeared on her face. Hi. He sighed again and troubled that Sona, just how childish she can be. Childish. For being a heiress to a great clan, she is still embarrassed about things like that. You know, like the incident from before you were there aren't you? The blush suddenly appeared in her face. You um, yeah, hmm? This girl don't tell me. Hmm what is this, I never thought that we have an innocent girl in H-E-R-E what is it? Want me to tell you the detailed version of what H-A-P-P-N-E-T said Naruto with teasing grin. She coughed and compassed herself. We will I think Kaichu already does that a charming smile appeared on her face. Besides, talking about innocent. Didn't a doll more befitting for it. Or maybe, someone who knitted. He this brat can talk back. He chuckled at a remark. True, but let me tell you something. For Yuritsubasa, someone like Namika's Naruto is just a normal person for the first time she saw him. A normal human likes her, no more than that. Yeah, the same with this world. However, one day, she found something that unexpected for her. She discovered the existence of a devil by becoming one. After that, she more and more finds that this world is more than full of normal human. But Sona Sitri is her king, she learns about something interesting every day. Until now. Because she learns another thing from the childhood friend of her king. Unexpected. Unpredictable. And unknown. That's where she found the situation now is on that three category. The doll. That just one second ago in his hand is now perched on her shoulder. Holding a sharp stalk that pointed on her neck. Even a doll can do something that non-innocent you know. There is it, the same mysterious smile when she saw him yesterday. When he training with someone who looks identical like him. Ha ha. She saw how the doll flying back to the man. It's hovering for a moment. And when her new teacher whispered something, the doll suddenly disappeared no. More like going through an invincible wall behind the blonde. Such an amazing skill performance. That's actually your lesson number four. Don't underestimate something that looks weak. Just a little moment you become careless, prepare for your lost. Ha ha. Now, since you seem prepared when coming here. Let's start it. And how about a spar? A sparring session maybe he wants to know how strong she is. Understood she does her own version of a battle stance. But, I want you to know, Tha, she can't even finish her word. Because suddenly from nowhere, she felt pain in her stomach before blown to another place. Her body was thrown like a rag doll before stopped by the tree on her back. While she throws up, the blonde janitor says. Lesson number one. Do not speak when you fight. 
If you want to convince your enemy, do it when they already down or can't move. When you fight then fight. When you talk then talk. Carved it on your head, it hurts. That kicks, she felt like her body splitting become two at that moment, but hold a great pain. She stands up. Hi. Before she sprinting with all her might to the man direction with fist cocking back. Lesson number two is what she heard before another blow threw her to the side. The amount of force that given makes her body break the tree before stopped by the second one. Always be prepared for an ambush from the enemy. Never thought that your opponent is alone before you confirms it, she can't even move anymore. The man was right. This is harsher than what she thinks. But the grunt, she answered her teacher. Good. Now, lesson number three. Suddenly from nowhere, she could see many sizzling paper around her. Always be aware your surrounding. The last thing she remembers is deafening sound before her vision is filled with darkness. Ha a sigh out from Naruto's mouth. Currently, we have the blonde performing some healing spell on his student. He's slightly impressed by her will to keep continue beside all those blows she received. The grunt telling him that the girl is awake. The janitor stopped healing her when the girl's eyes fluttered, make sure TP give her a grin and a playful salute we she see his face. Yo. She raised herself and look at her own palm, then checks her own body with a confused face. What's wrong? The question makes her looking at him. Uh is that, happened? What? The kick, the blows, and the bomb. The man chuckled at those pure confused on her face. Yes, it is. Just look behind you. The girl complied it. He could imagine her shocked face when seeing a wide crater with many trees was down. And for why your body doesn't feel hurt right now, it's because I healed you. So. How is it? Want to continue? He could understand if the girl turns down the offer now. Yes with this I'm more convinced to get stronger. Please continue the lesson, sensei. Well, what do you know? Sometimes, interesting happened in front of you unexpectedly. Okay. Then, let's clean up this place first. But the flick from his fingers, all the debris, trees and soil began to move magically. They were moving like when you rewind a movie on a video player, makes there's nothing happened from the start. Amazing it's different from using magic. The blonde ignores her and put his hands on her shoulder. Now. For next lesson, I want you tell me what is your weakness, Tsubasa-kun. There's a twitch on her eyebrows. I'm a girl, of course you are. That would be freaky when you saw a man wear a skirt. Well except for a trap. A really really cute trap. Ah also a visible blush appeared my name and too close. Ah, that's right. She's just an innocent girl in the inside. The blonde releases his hand from her shoulder and takes a step back. Sorry about that. So, what is it? Your weakness. You um, it's. The moment she opened her mouth, a certain kaiju words ringing in her head. You're a, hi, kaiju, let me give you an advice a vui vui good advice. The blue haired girl sweat dropped at the kaiju's tone. Oh uh, what is it? Never once. Don't you ever tell him your weakness. I understood. Tsubasa kun, what is it? His voice brings her back. Ah uh, no. It's just, um, can she tell it? But kaiju words. Tsubasa kun, it's okay if you don't want to say it. But that means I can't give you the next lesson. I, I understand. She could trust him, right? Besides, he just wants to help her, right? It's a frog. Hums again. It's a frog. Ahahaha, you joking, right? No. It's a frog. I'm afraid of a frog, toad, or something that resembles like them. There she said it, and now wait. Why is he smiling like that? A uh, sensei. Somehow that Cheshire smile on his face makes her regret it. Then lesson number five. Really, really regretted it. In the front of Kuo Academy, where we can see red hue of sunset illuminates the place. On the inside school building, at the shoe locker's place. There's Tomo and Nomura Ruko who finished changing their shoes. You know I'm still surprised when all those commotion in the student council room before is just because a bento said Tomo to her cowhide. Yeah, but is it really that bad? Namika-san is. After she said it, the brow twin ponytails girl felt Tomo hands on her shoulders. Trust me, Ruruko. That bastard is more than a bad. He is like a nightmare that comes to mock you over and over again. Ha ha. Just what kind of bad impression he did to her senpai. The two continued to walk from there. And the moment they was out. Something that very unusual passing in front of them. The first one is a tall blue haired girl who crying. They know her as Tsubasa for Tomo. And Tsubasa senpai for Raruko. Currently, she shows a rare cute damsel in distress expression. He we e. And there she goes. The second one is frogs. A lot of frogs that small big huge humanoid form and is that one flying. Kiro 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 Kiro. They currently are chasing the blue haired girl. And the last one is Naruto. Riding a giant sized frog on its top. Jaihahaha. He is also chasing the blue haired girl with maniacal laughter of him. The two stood silent after their janitor passing to the left. The older with bangs covered her eyes and the younger with pure white eyes. Wah wah what the hell is that? The first who regains her sense was Raruko. She grabs Tomo's sleeves and shaking it while looking at where the chase direction. 
Hurry up, Tomo Senpai. We have to save Tsubasa Senpai. Save. Hi. We have to save her from those frogs. What are you talking about? The brown girl turned her head back to Tomo. What do you mean? Then she saw it. The pawn of Sona Citri's purages saw her senpai expression. The smile that screaming fake and blank dead fish eyes like someone who escaping reality. But frogs. I don't see anything. At that moment, she finally realizes. Sa. Let's go home. My cat is having a labor now, and I want to meet the kittens. That Namek is Naruto is a terrifying person. The evening, different time and PLAC. AN2, the different on below is intentional. All the conversation is Naruto and his clones until page break. The situation now is where Naruto sitting in a chair while looking the church below him. Currently, he wears a uniform with many medals like some high-ranking military person. Lieutenant. Report. There's another Naruto beside step two beside him. Lieutenant, yes commander. Right now, in location A still nothing happened. CM, still nothing. Lieutenant, no sir. CM, what the hell they're doing? Lieutenant, oh they are still talking. CM, TCH. This is why I hate brats. And how about location B? Lieutenant, yes sir. In location B. The kitten, the blonde Bishounen, and the wanted harem king still fighting Wei Cadet 1, says that the albino guy his face became blue for a second. Lieutenant, is retreating from the battle, and now he is escaping through Route 45. CM, 45. Lieutenant, yes sir. CM, hmm. The commander Naruto thought something about the revelation. You see, when he harvesting some vegetables near the old Kuo school building. His sense of hero's action is tingling when saw a the kitten, and a Bishounen from Grimory peerages out from the building. So, without furthermore he creates a clone to continue harvesting before follows them. When he saw they are going towards a the place where all those fallen angel gathering, the blonde janitor saw an opportunities to make sure that the sacred gear on a is indeed the red dragon emperor. The one where drag soul reside. Then, deciding to make it interesting. He dressed as a commander, creates many clones as minion, and watches the situation like a certain Akari Gendu. With his bland of course. In location A, we have the Gremory girl and her queen. They still engaging the three fallen angels. Yeah sure. Engaging. Oh. One of them is the same one from this morning. And if he has to say, the girl has a potential as a Tsukomi. Okay, he will save her for later. Just fight already. Throw some spears. Or spells. Or, or anything. And in location B, we have the other active member of Gremory Girl. From the report before, the albino guy is already forfeiting. CM, prepare for a long-range weapon. I want that guy to suffer. Lieutenant, sir, yes sir. But the salute, the lieutenant complied the order. Now loading, lieutenant, sir. The preparation is complete. CM, good. He stands up and turning around. CM, lieutenant. What is this? Lieutenant, sir. This is M202 Flash, a rocket launcher with four tubes that can have 66mm incendiary rockets in it. Nonetheless, we have modified the rocket with something non-flammage and only explodes. Not only has good impact for explosion. It could make the enemy only half dead if used skillfully. A smirk formed in the commander before he took the RPG. CM, after this mission over, remind me for your promotion. Lieutenant, sir yes sir. He put the rocket launcher on the shoulder, locked on the target, and then fires it. Swoosh 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 swoosh. Boom 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 boom. But the puff of smoke, the weapon is gone from his shoulder. CM, how is it? Ask the commander to the lieutenant who's searching the albino guy with a telescope. Lieutenant, he's still alive sir. CM, still alive. Lieutenant, yes sir. CM, good. He shared high five with the lieutenant. Sir. Another identical figure comes and gives the commander a salute. He currently is holding a phone. CM, state your business. Yes sir, cadet 3 reporting. There's a call for you sir. CM, a call. From who? C3, we don't know him sir, but he want to speak with you. Making a giving gesture, he received the phone. CM, speak. Commander, this is Snake. The Metal Gear is already. CM, wait wait wait. Who the hell are you? SN, who is this? CM, no, buddy. I'm the one who asks first. SN, sorry, wrong number. The phone is closed. CM, Lieutenant. Trace backs the line. Lieutenant, yes sir. Hey you. Tell the communication department to trace back the line and, sir. Lieutenant, what is it? We have a report from Cadet 4 that the Grimory girl is in preparing to attack. Lieutenant, it can't be helped then. Commander. Your order. The said commander looks at the lieutenant eyes with a serious expression. CM, tells the entire soldier to disperse. Lieutenant, I trust you to inform me about the situation in location B, and for confirming the Red Dragon Emperor. There's a contemplating face on the lieutenant, before he answered the order. Lieutenant, sir yes sir. The last he saw from his commander, is a flash of yellow before he turned around. There's an order to be executed. Ra ra you shouldn't have made her upset, you silly angels said Himajima Akeno when seeing those demonic energy burst from her king. 
before said the king is releasing her family trademark blast and wipe the fallen angels in front of her. Makes their existence as just a few feathers in the air. Until a whistling sound can be heard from the side. What a display of power and e gremory girl. Immediately, the two great ladies from Kuo Academies turned their head to the source. You. Namika-san. Indeed. There stood our Naruto who currently carrying the unconscious blonde fallen angel. Osu. Your janitor of Kuo Academies here he gave the two cheeky grins. What are you doing in here? Also, that girl don't tell me. You are one their companion said Ria's while once again demonic energy leaking from her. Who? Me? One of them. Of course Nadi wants to wave his hand to emphasize it. But it currently is being used. Then why would you save her? Said Akeno curiously but still prepared. Oh, this girl well you see, my client wants to clarify some things about this development. So, I think with taking this girl and give it to my client would satisfy him ah, that's right. It's also because I've taken an interest in this girl. She has a potential after all. He added a pause so they could digest the information. Who is your client? And what kind of potential you're talking about? Tell me demand the Gremory heiress. Um, let's see. I can't answer the first one. It's my policy for not give information about the client well that's a lie and it's same for the second one. But, just because I don't wanna. Red Moon Blood just a chan. He could see a twitch on the Gremory girl's eyebrows. Her aura instantly disappeared. What did you say? Rre, what's wrong? Ah, that's right. He coughed twice before continued with teasing grin in this world. There are two kinds of justice. The truth justice and the false justice. Stuop. The Gremory girl suddenly shouted while closing her ears with hands. And he knows she still could hear what he says. But don't be mistaken. There's actually the third justice. The one who brings everything to peace he continued it with a tone like an incantation for a spell. No. I don't want to hear any more. I don't want to hear any more. She starts to roll left and right in the ground. Who but you? Akeno's still confused about what happened. Just what kind of spell that the janitor used to make her butt you like this. What a terrifying opponent. But Naruto still continued yes. And the name who will execute it is none other than the Red Moon Blood Justice Chan. The shame. The shame. The shame. The shame. Now she punching the ground rapidly with demonic energy enhanced fist. Who but you? Please stop it, the ground hasn't done anything wrong. And Akeno start to calming Rias. Yufufu a a a ha 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 ha. He let out his evil laughter, knowing already wins the battle without fighting. Then, may our path meet again. White bluish magical circle appeared beneath him. That symbol, from Citri's clan. That's R-I-G-H-T and if you want to find out something about me, please ask Sona. Jaini said Naruto still smiling before a blinding flash makes him disappeared. Leaving a depressed Rias and bewildered Akeno. Just, who is he? Suddenly jump on few day later, M-O-R-N-I-N-G. Ugh why should I do this again? It started with a groan from a feminine voice. She has blonde hair, green ribbon tied on top of her head, blue eyes, and wears Kuo Academy's female uniform. Nope. This is not an ok. It's just middled with a different hairstyle. Don't just complaining in there. Look, your classmates has arrived. Let's go greet them a familiar male voice followed after the girl. Pointing his fingers toward a say and a blonde haired girl with green eyes. Hein muttered the girl, clearly find the situation not so enjoyable. And remembers. Your name is Namika's Nanari from now on. Hi hi. They start walking to the gate direction, the male leading in the front, while the blonde girl look at the man from behind with a wary expression. On a certain middle it's M-E-M-O-R-Y. She found herself in an unknown room, unknown time, and unknown condition. Oh, she wakes up. The male voice can be heard on her left. You. What are you doing in here? It was the same janitor from this morning. And beside him is. As is Osama. She was shocked for someone with high-ranking fallen angel to be in there. She thinks the ritual that Renal Sama is success. So the ritual is, sorry to interrupt your delusion, but your plan has failed. It was the janitor who said it. Failed? What, what did he mean by that? But there's Azazel Sama, he is here to raise her ranks right. That was what Renal Sama promised to her. What do you mean? Like I said, your plan has failed. And your boss, fallen angel Renal were killed in the process. The ritual is fail, and Renal Sama is killed. Now. The question is what we should do, to you, eh? She was confused about what he means. It was as if she didn't have a choice. I mean one, you're just a low rank full an angel. So if your existence disappeared, it's not really matter to us. What is this person saying? Is what she thought at that time. Do, you abandoned your order from the higher ups to assist another low rank full an angel in an unofficial mission. I don't know what kind of punishment they will give you. Well wait, as is Osama. What is this person saying? Do don't tell me that he. She doesn't even hear an answer and it's like she never has in the first one. And when Azazel Sama turning around, she learns that betrayal is something very painful feeling. Azazel Sama. So, any last words? 
A red spear that leaking demonic aura from the janitor hands is pointed at her. I I, she can feel warm liquid around her cheek. She was crying. Her body was unconsciously trembling beyond fear. She feels like death is in front of her. Um. What is it? I don't want to die. Her voice was weak and wavering. Sorry, I can't hear you. The man already cocked his spear, ready to throw it at her. That you makes her shut her eyes and cry with all her might. I don't want to die. Please, I will do anything. So don't kill me. She could feel the tip of that spear near her chest. Her clothes were ripped off. Anything. Yes. Anything. That's why please. Proud can go to hell. She still wants to live. You fu a a a ha 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 ha. His laugh is confusing her. You heard that, damn brat. I won the bet. DCH, those your luck even more frightening than all four great satans combined to one, you old man. Yeah, yeah. The loser can say anything. I still won by the way. They were betting for her life. Do not get mistaken girl. You still be punished in the first place. She could feel something choke her when that demonic spear nears her throat. Before it released when the man pulls it back. But I you what is the meaning of this? I don't understand it anymore. To make it simpler. At first, I want to bring you to the HQ for your punishment. But this old man. As is Osama pointing his finger at the blonde male. An old man he says. Has refused it. So I suggesting to make a bet that if you will say as is Osama, save me. Or I'll do anything. When you saw death in front of your eyes. Uh, then, yeah, technically. He saved you. Breath that unconsciously she holds, out from her mouth. Her body slumped down, thinking she feels safe now. She turns her head to the blonde man direction and says. Thank you. It was an honest grateful word from the bottom of her heart. Well we'll do something about you later. For now, I'm curious why don't you introduce your friend, as. Like I said, please stop calling me that. Jai Chan. Okay as. Infused is probably the word. She saw that the blonde man is the one who holds controls in that conversation. And why as is Osama just takes his insult. Moreover, Jai Chan. He looks no older than a teenager. Why is Azizul Osama calling him like that? So many questions but she chooses to keep quiet. So, who is he? She saw another man, he has gray hair, gray eyes, and wears something that clearly says I'm a yaoi material character for all for Joshi to use. She really needs a rest at that time. Ugh, she is shocked when the blonde man suddenly becomes sick. His face was pale blue, like someone who holds a vomit. Boy damn brat. You, wait a minute, Jai Chan. He's Bali, host of the White Dragon Emperor. Who would have thought that she would meet the host of the White Dragon Emperor, one of the two Heavenly Dragon? Seriously this, ugh why you always surrounded by pretty guys. HMPH, so this is the one you call Jai Chan, Azizel. Not looks that strong. Ja, yeah, and Ichiha attitude too. What a frightening combination. Okay, even if she doesn't understand what they're saying at that time. The conversation seems interesting for her. Mama, forgive him, Jai Chan. What is this the leader of fallen angels placating to a mere devil? What a joke. You should stop it, Bali. Another voice can be heard in that room. Hey, so you're already awake. Albion. Yeah, good to see you again, Naruto-sama. Now this is funny, even one of the two heavenly dragons is bowed to him. Dragon the voice from the gray-haired man's body is the English dragon. And it called the blonde man Naruto-sama. Just who is this person? Bali, you don't know anything about him. So you better stop it now. She heard the blonde laughing again. What is it, what's so funny? You have an interesting host, Albion want me to break him like your previous one. The moment this Naruto guy said it, something invisible forced her down. It's kind of hard to breath now. She even could barely see Azazel Sama and the gray-haired guy sweating. Ugh, ah sorry, girl. I kinda forgot that you're still here. It's gone. That invincible heavy pressure is gone. Ha ha. She slightly thanked at that. Something would have broken if he continued that. Bali, you should cool down your head now. After Azazel Sama said that, the gray-haired man simply compiled it. It's clear that Azazel Sama wants this Bali guy too out from there. He was walking out, but before glancing at Naruto. Makes the situation becomes tense once again. It keeps like that, before finally the guy is gone. Ha ah, sorry about that, Jai Chan. Nah he's still a kid after all. Now, about this girl. That's the end of it. And for her, she just gets an order from Azazel Sama to observe the host of the Red Dragon Emperor. Which she learned it was the same guy that Renal saw, no. It was same guy that Renal ditched. She just has to observe him as the little sister of this Naruto guy. But not that all, she also has to do it as one of Kuo Academy's student. And remembering when she meets this janitor at the first time, God hopes she could still sane after, after when. The two are now currently walking near the gate, where several students confusedly seeing a cute blonde girl near their janitor. Boy, put up your act. Don't you want to make your high school debut success? Naruto muttered enough for the girl. Instantly, the girl expression change becomes cheerful with bubbly aura. Hi, Ani-chan. She said it with dazzling innocent smile and affectionate tone. 
Naruto suddenly clenching his fist with manly tears leaked from his eyes. Who this is it? The amount of chara that I wait. If you fool, Ani chan is weird, he suddenly glomped the girl, rubbing his cheek to hers. I'm showy, Nanari chan. This Ani chan of yours is so weird, the girl just laughs it off then suddenly began fidgeting. Ani chan, people are watching, truth to be told. The students of Kuo Academy who passing were muttering while looking at him. Don't mind it, don't mind it, eh, Hirogami? Another male voice interrupts their hugging session. Naruto who broke the hug is turning his head. Looking at the man that he called as a friend. Hi do Issei. Hmm. Issei. Nanari finally meet her target and finally launching the plan that she and Naruto devised yesterday. By pulling the janitor's sleeves like a lost puppy and say. Ani-chan, who is this? And what he means by Irogami. Ahahaha, don't mind it Nanari-chan. This guy has some issue in his head, boy. Ah, by the way. Nanari-chan, this is Hi do Issei. Issei, this is my Amado, Namek is Nanari. The brunette was shocked after hearing that. Amado. Hirogami, you have an Amado. Why you never say anything about her the question was trailed off when his light brown eyes falling to Nanari center area. More accurately on chest. His face that clearly shows a pity makes the fallen angel in disguise feel a twitch in her eyebrows, but she couldn't do as she pleases right now because of her innocent character act. Nevertheless, she still could do this. Bonnie Chan, why is he looking at my chest? Which makes Naruto grab the self-proclaimed harem king and look him eye to eye before he leaned to whisper something in sharp deadly tone. Something like, Na, Issei. Do you still remember what happened to Mitsuda and Motohama one week ago? A certain memory when he saw his two close friends were tied on a pole with nothing but a piece of paper covering their genital area in front of school building is surfaced. Ha ha, do you know why they could become like that? And no, the dark chuckle that makes Issei shivered can be heard. It's because they trying to steal my Milky Yui 9 9 limited version, and you know what? Maybe there will be another guy that will end up just like them. A guy with initial H and I. But don't worry. Because I'm so generous, I'll tell you how to avoid it. It's easy just behave yourselves to my Amado Naruto pull his head and look into his say eyes. Are. We. Clear. The brunette could only give nods as his answer. Which makes Naruto demeanor turn totally 180 degrees. But you understand. Now he turned his head, right only to see a trembling blonde girl with green eyes that have tears on its sides and mouth that wavering. He couldn't be helped sweat dropped when her face. It is so much resembled as a nime baby who hold their tears. R. She takes a step back. S. Scary. A miss. Don't come close to me. Her shouts makes his eyes are shadowed. There's a depressed aura around him. Oh no. Issei sent help me. Slowly, Naruto goes to a nearby tree and crouched while drawing circles in the ground. It hurts my heart as hurts. Unknown to them, Nanari look at the situation with WTF looks. One is pale white, one is terrified, and one is depressed. Is every day gonna be like this? The moment for calm D-O-W-N. Now we can see the four already back to normal. Which all because of Nanari efforts. Ahem now, I think the introduction should continue. My name is Namika's Naruto, Nanari's Ani-chan. And you? Naruto looks at the blonde girl behind us say. And my name is Asia Argento. Finally. Argento-san is it? Can you lend me a say for a moment? There's something we have to talk to, eh? Talk. What do are you? About Renal Naruto quickly shut him with sharp subject. Knowing it could make the conversation goes fast. Their reaction was as expected like what he thought. Issei who suddenly tensed in prepare and Asia tensed in fear. How do you a memory about his but you explaining something to him surfaced? I see, so that's true that you. Issei he stopped him, then look at Nanari before back to him not here. The brunette seems confused for a moment, before a shocked face for a moment before becomes an understandment. Ani-chan, what's wrong? Who is Renel? Naruto instantly become nervous. Oh oh. Renel is a name of Italian food. And yesterday, Issei said that he wants to know where to buy it, he nudged Issei for a help. Ah that's right. Hirogami says that it's so delicious so I want to try it, Issei-san. Ah. Argento-san, could you accompany Nanari-chan for a moment? Good. The blonde didn't let her answering when quickly grab Issei to a nearby quiet place. The two are in a clearing around the woods now. There's a silence between them, waiting for who's going to ask first. About you're a devil is it true? It was from Issei. Yeah. I trust the Gremory girl is the one who told you. Yes, but you also said you saved one of the fallen angel. Yeah, I did. Why? She was part of the groups who make Asia suffering. It's not a simply because someone takes an interest on her right. Questioned the brunette. Naruto let out a deep sigh. Then let me say this first to say. What? What would you do when hurt an innocent devil was offered for a good position in some famous office with high salary and what she should do is just to kill a boy? Issei was shocked for a moment before he thinks about it and then said. What do you mean? 
does think it is a random question, nothing more. I, I will convince her as hard as I can that what she did is bad. A smile appeared in Naruto's face. That's not really bad answer, but it changed again to become more deadly serious. Now, about a gento san case. How about the fallen angel that I safe, is has the same condition. Or worse, she was threatened. The brunette's eyes widening. Never thought something like that also could be happened. I I, he can't answer it. Ding dong dang dong. The bell from Kuo Academy is like a timer for the two, it also indicates the starts of the first period for students. On each an. The Nari voice come can be heard. Makes the two men looking at the two girls who looking for them. Naruto quickly put up a smile and answered the girl ah, that's right. You have a class don't you? Sorry, for making you waiting he looking at Issei once again. Now, Issei. Could you show Nanari-chan your classroom? She's your new classmate after all. Understood. The brunette passing the janitor, but before said the janitor whispered in Issei's ears. Sorry about that, Issei. But I just want you to think not all fallen angels are bad also, Nanari isn't a devil. Please don't tell her some unnecessary things. Hi. He watches how the three walk together. The blonde girl that with Issei, Asia Argento, seems chatting happily with Nanari, and Issei keep entertaining them with his fake happy demeanor. He looks at them till going inside the building, before he raised his fist and leaked another manly tear. Ku Naruto. You're so cool back there. And it's all as planned. The plan is simple. First, he will need middle to be registered as a student in Kuo Academy, with help from the student council. He said to Sona that Middleton is an important person from Fallen Angel Fraction and has an order to observe the growth of the Red Dragon Emperor in Issei. Second, he introduces Middleton as his little sister. Namak is Nanari. And make her act like just a normal human in front of anyone. And the last one is just to make Issei believe that not all of Fallen Angels are bad. It's for when Middleton's Fallen Angel identities is found out, she still could observe the Red Dragon Emperor with ease. Knowing Issei, Naruto believed the guy will do what he feels right. Nonetheless, that's all what Azazel and Middleton wants. For Naruto, he will give her the necessary things and backup, as long as the girl could impress him. That's all. He's standing in there for a few minutes, before his danger sensor is tingling, makes him jumping to the side and missing a kick from someone. The man, short red hair with some kind antenna sticking out from his head, brown eyes, and wears Kuo Academy school uniform. Oi. What's wrong with you, buddy? What's wrong the unidentified man trembling what's wrong you said? He pointed himself this is what's wrong. It's you're doing right. Huh, what are you? Then the memory flooded to his mind. It seems, the clone that he uses for harvesting is still in intact until before. And because he is bored at the moment, he chooses to execute a plan to give the experiment number 98751 to a certain girl. That means, the FFT. Is is that you he also trembled. Holding his laugh Tomokai then he broke it and start to run to some direction. Jai ha 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 ha. We have a shemail in this school. Jai ha 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 ha. Wait you bastard. In a vast meadow, he's laying in the ground with closed eyes. A gentle breeze passed his face that facing the blue sky while clouds sometimes covering him from the sunlight. Peaceful is what you could say if saw his face now. Ha ha ha. The child's giggles can be heard by him, make he open his eyes, and showing his blue sapphire orbs to the world, only to see an ocean blue one. The smiling little girl has long sun-kissed blonde and round-shaped face, which showing a similarity as his, but with small baby fat. She gives him an amused smile with mischievous looks. Are you awake already? The girl's question is only answered by a smile from him before a different scene flashed. This time, it shows the little girl from before in her teens. She's prostrating, showing her determination to him. Please, train me I need power to find him to find my last family to find my father. He looks at the gesture with hurt, before dismissed it with a blank face when the girl raised her head. I understand. The girl was smiling at him. He was not. Another different scene is shown to him, where the same girl in her adult ages. She looks at him with anger as tears already out from her eyes. Why why you never told it why you never said that you are why oh too san. He only could look at another direction with muttering one word sincerely. Sorry. It becomes white again, before another scene appeared. The same blonde haired girl know she's a woman now, stood in front of him with a determined look. I'm going. Said the woman before she turned back and starts walking. You will die if you go, let me. Oh too san, interrupted the girl. You are the key to end this disaster, you are the last hope to drive them out from our world. So trailed off the woman who spat out when she said them. Naruto gritting his teeth, feels like bounded by chains for the first time to save his precious peoples. Besides, a great person once told me. A parent's job is to protect their child even if they are hated by them right, Otu-san. Continued the woman as she gives him a reassuring smile. Even if he gives a reassured smile to her, the worry's still in there. Another one, where he saw the woman holds a dirty blonde-haired boy. He was happy for finally arrived to their place, feel reassured that his daughter and grandson are safe. 
He looks at the two with relief, the two who laughs, the two who hug each other with happy tears, the two who saw him and waving their hands with smiles, before several swords impaled them, blue eyes suddenly snapped up, looking at the ceiling with an empty mind. Slowly, the owner of those eyes registered what happened to him. A dream huh, muttered the man before he looks at the clock on his side. 3.17 a.m., he closed his eyes and sighed in annoyance. Of all memories why have to be that one on it, turning to another side, he decided to go back to sleep. He am a yawn. In the small cabin, where the place a certain janitor of Kuo Academy and his new tenant lives in. We found the owner of the house, Namakiz Naruto, who currently walking like a zombie in some third-rated horror movie to a kitchen. The blonde who has three whiskers like Mark stopped when arrives in front of a refrigerator. He looks at it with blank face, before he looks at the cabinet on top of it. The blonde thinking if he should make omelette rice, pancakes, or an instant food for breakfast. Instant one then. Decided Naruto who feel lazy to make a proper meal today. He took several instant ramens and porridges from the cabinet before went to the kitchen still with those half-lidded eyes in his sleepy face. Grab a pot, fill it with water, and start to heat it, Naruto waiting the water for boil, as he saw it like a 60 years old labor worker who lamenting his lives. Anyway, Naruto is waiting, waiting, and waiting the water for boil until his body shivering because of nature calls. Toilet said the blonde before start moving to the bathroom. Naruto moving slightly faster, arrived in front of it, twisting the doorknob, and then went inside to use the room, eh? Only for see her in there. Instead of a simple empty bathroom, what he saw is a blonde-haired girl who turns her head at his direction, while currently trying to wear a black lace panty. That girl is Middled, a fallen angel who has a task for observing the red dragon gauntlet in one of Rhea's Gremory's peerages, by disguising herself as Naruto's little sister and a normal student in Kuo Academy. Not this again groaned Naruto with boredom, telling what happened in there is not something new to him. The girl's eyes widened, mouth agape, and a clearly shocked face appeared in there before changed to a blush with teardrop on side her eyes. Naruto didn't look at her face and focusing his gaze on the panties for a moment and then give the girl in front him a flat stare. 60 points. Bam, before he shut the door with a bang and walks away as if nothing happened in there. Bam, as expected, the girl quickly opened the door. Clad only in her black lace panties while her left hand covering her not so big breast. You muttered the girl with anger as pink light spear slowly formed on her right hand. Naruto who see it just do stretching, knowing where is this going to. Who okay another morning warm up then. Muttered Naruto, not bothered by the wrath aura that radiating from the girl's body. The blonde girl raised her head, showing a flustered adorable glare instead the usual evil one. Pervert. Shouted the girl as she throw the spear at Naruto, only for it miss when the blonde man tilting his head. One spear dodged. Clang, and going through the window. Said Naruto still with boredom. DRR the girl become frustrated as she summoned more pink light spears before throw it. Pervert pervert pervert. Naruto comically stretching his waist to the left and right before jump then land in ridiculous eagle pose. Three spears dodged. Swoosh swoosh swoosh. And going through the window said Naruto still with bored tone. The girl gritting her teeth, anger and embarrassed when felt the man make fun of her, before summoning five spears that floated around her, along with two other spears on her hands. Not bothered to cover her not so big chest and pink anymore, too focused for thinking how to castrate the man in front of her. On the other side, Naruto didn't move from his eagle pose and keep looking at middled with boredom, make a twitch in the girl's head increased. The two just be quiet in there. Drip, the sound of water drop can be heard clearly. Drip, the two focused on that sound, knowing it's the bell to end there, another, dispute. Drip, the game is on. Raya. Shouted the girl without intent to lose. Ah said the man with flat tone to mock the girl. From outside the cabin, now we can see several pink light flashed and dimmed several times, before thing become more chaotic as a sound something broke, explode, and scream can be heard from that place. And that is how another Naruto's day starts in Kuo Academy. Now we see Naruto and Middle 2 currently walking through the woods to Kuo Academy's direction. One annoyed, meanwhile the other with embarrassment. You know, I think I'm already tired of the so-called bathroom event from a typical love comedy scene. I mean, it is surely amusing on the first day, but now said Naruto who has a red hand mark on his right cheek. SH shut up. It was your entire fault to suddenly come in like that. Accused Middle who has a bump on her head. No, it was your fault for always not locking the door in the first place. Pointed Naruto who makes the girls mumbled something while looking at another direction as her embarrassment increased. Naruto sighed at her stubbornness. Whatever. By the way, how is Issei's progress? Even embarrassed, Middle still answer it. Still nothing about his boosted gear. It seems the Gremory girl is focusing on his physical strength first. Um is the shape changed? The shape? No, it stills the same as before. I see said Naruto indifferently but actually thought it further. The shape is still same from the awakening state. 
So that means Issei still hasn't gained the gift abilities on the second form. Naruto sighed at how slow Issei's development compared to previous hosts, before he decided to keep the mater for later and continued walking. Hey Naruto, Middle suddenly called his name, which Naruto replied by a grunt. The Lord is really already gone, isn't he? Ah, that's right. Several days ago, he accidentally revealed the biblical god is dead to Middle. Well actually, it's not an accident. Even he himself still thought how stupid it sounds at the way he revealed the one who created humans has died. It was when he testing a new game from a friend. The game was freaking difficult and when he lost over than 50 times, he was cursing the biblical god despite he is already dead. Middle who heard it asked about what he means and while still unfocused because of the game, he answered with the biblical god is dead and war nonchalantly. See? How stupid it sound isn't it? Anyway. The fallen angel asks the evidence, which he just told her to pull a devil power by reversing the way she pulls her holy power and then mix it together. Normally it is impossible to that, but because the biblical god is dead. When he realized what he said, Naruto turned his head and found Middle already cried as a small ball floated in front her hand. Even the size so small, he still can sense the mixed power in it. Before he could say something about his statement, the girl just runs to her room and locked it. He was confused, why would the fallen one would sad for someone that already unrelated to him or her. From as information, Middleton is actually coming from heaven before she becomes a fallen one. And knowing how her creator died was the reason that makes the girl's feeling turmoil. She started to sulk and didn't talk for a week before she suddenly apologized for her behavior last night. Something must be happened to make her suddenly cheered up like that. It's not as if he cared about her or something. He just can't stand to see someone sulking in front of him. It's kind of reminding himself in the past. Anyway, everything is back to normal and let's end it like that. I already told you, didn't I? Answered Naruto indifferently. Yes, but how? I know it's because of a war, but how come a powerful deity like him could trail Middle as she looks at the ground? Naruto who saw it just sighed in displeasure. Well what I can say is, paused Naruto as bitter smile formed in his face. It's because he was protecting something precious to him. Something precious what is it? Questioned Middle before flinched when she looks at Naruto's face. That smile again, sometimes, she asks something that leading to his past, but the answer she always got is that same wry smile of him. Middled usually doesn't care if someone angered, cried, or even begged for not to be killed in front of her. However, this man there's something wrong with him. It's as if he would break if keeping smiling like that. And the weird thing is she is worried about him. Middled shook her head and opened her mouth to change the topic, but before she could do that, nah nothing yosh. Let's end this happy atmosphere and focusing on something that more important interrupted Naruto cheerfully. Middle sighed in fake displeasure at how he forcefully changes the topic. Hi hi, I bet you're going to say something stupid anyway. Said the fallen angel indifferently. No no no, a grin formed in the janitor's face. It's about what happened in the bathroom before he wiggling his eyebrows as if wants to emphasize something. Wow, you know if that keeps continuing, I could assume that you just want me to look at your not so impressing body, he gave her a mock thinking pose, or don't tell me trailed off Naruto before he looked at Middle with teasing smile uo, Mitchan, u p e r v e r t, w h who are you calling a pervert and don't be suddenly friendly with me. Shouted Middle in embarrassment. Naruto ignored her and continued. But I'll say that a black lace panty doesn't suit you. I recommended a blue stripped or a white one with bare pictures on it, but of course, going commando is the best after all. That's a sexual harassment you jerk, the worst, an enemy of all women. Ahaha <laughs> if you said it like that said Naruto sheepishly while scratching the back of his head. Why are you blushing? Me? Of course I would after praise by my own little sister. Said Naruto as if it was a matter of fact. Or you have a hearing problem that was clearly not a compliment. Moreover I'm not your little sister. Naruto ignore her by pumping his fist in manly tears. Kuma my little sister can be this so cute. Being it sun sun in the outside then dear dear in the house, Ani chan is h-a-p-p-y. There's must be something wrong with your head. Naruto ignores her again with giving a nice guy pose don't mind, it's a normal for someone like us to do perverted things. I am mind about it. Unlike you, I have something called common sense. Ahaha, <laughs> you make me blushing. Your head is really messed up isn't it? Really? Don't suddenly ask it. But worry not, Mitchan. Even if you are a pervert, Ani Chan still loves you. Don't lump me together with you, you damn maniac. I'm not the one who has a mountainous of humph quickly, Middle clamped her mouth to prevent finishing what she said. Hmm? Has a mountainous of what? Middle shook her head rapidly in denial. No nothing. She started sweating bullets when the blonde man looking at her suspiciously. Oh h o o i c, I see Naruto nodded sagely as he struck an invisible beard. W h what? Said Middle cautiously. Mit Chan, I never thought that you are said Naruto as his face become closer, which makes middle face become redder. Ah, there's Asia then he suddenly dismissed it while look at another direction. 
don't just end it like that you good for nothing blonde. Minari saw and they were interrupted by a familiar feminine shout yet with melodious voice, which makes the atmosphere around middle completely change become cheerful with bubbly aura. Become her disguise as Namaka's Nanari from the previous chapter. Hi. Replied Middleton her fake persona as she looked at the source of the voice. Whoa nice reaction muttered Naruto who holding his laughter now. Middleton looks at him with a nasty glare for a moment before focusing on the one who called her. There's a say beside Asia who waving her hand cheerfully at the end of the woods path. The blonde fallen angel thought about something before grinning when an idea appeared in her head. She turned her face to the other blonde girl and waving back. Asaya-san. Ah cried Naruto in pain. By the way, the reason Naruto yelped is because Middle stomped Naruto's foot when Middle called Asia back. The fallen angel takes this chance for running to Asia while Naruto's still caressing his pained foot. Oh hey, Asia-san. Hi do. Greeted Middle cheerfully. Oh hey you greeted back as say. Oh hey you, Ninari-san I know what's wrong with your Ani-san. Greeted Asia before she questioned about the male blonde. Hmm. Middle tilting her head in fake confusion before she turned her head and facing back her brother who's still in pain. Seems like that mana enchanted stomp has worked well. Ah, Ani Chan. Are you okay? Did you stumble upon something again? said Middle worriedly before she put her hands on her waist. Moo, didn't I told you to take a day off? Now that's what happened if you didn't listen to me, finished Middle with a pout. Eh? What's wrong with Hirogami? questioned to say to the girl. Middle sighed in displeasure. Listen to this, Haidu. Ani Chan was working until late night and barely gets asleep. I said that he should take a day off for once in a while, but no he's so stubborn for it. Now he's too unfocused for working because of it, said the fallen angel dramatically. You little bird I'll remember this humiliation Naruto gritted his teeth for a moment before smiling sheepishly at her. Ahahaha, it seems you're right. Maybe I take a rest for a little. And you will do not admit it before she grabbed Asia's hand let's go, Asia-san. Before she dragged the former nun happily to the school. Wah wait a minute Nanari-san. Nanari-san. Ninari saw and pleaded the girl who surprised, but only for be ignored. Meanwhile Issei who look at the display with a smile. He's happy that Asia seems to have another friend. Yo, ah. Before he shouted and take a step back when Naruto's face suddenly in front of him. Don't suddenly surprising me like that. Naruto is just waving his outburst before he also looking at middle to dragging Asia. The two girls are already become close in these past days. If Naruto was ignorant, he would think the former nun just innocently believed that she has a new friend, meanwhile the fallen angel just playing around with the former nun because of her disguise. But he actually knows that his supposed to be little sister is happy about their friendship. Not only that, he is also suspicious the bishop of that gremory girl is the one who cheered up middle after knew the biblical god is dead. Well, enough about that. Now for Issei. Naruto who's still looking at the two blonde haired girls suddenly says, so, Issei. Did you impregnate Asia already? Issei did a spit take after hearing that. Wah what are you talking about? Moreover, what kind of question is that? Nah, nothing. Just a joke. Now Shu, go to your class dismiss Naruto. Issei's mouth already opened to argue back, but the school's bell is already ringed before he could do it. Hi said the brunette devil tiredly before he going to inside the school building. Naruto look at the host of drag for a second before he going to another direction. Well, time to work, pfft, what a joke. He will make a clone to work before he takes a nap somewhere else instead. The day has a nice weather after all. But before that, in another place, there's Sona who walking in a school hall with Tsubaki beside her. Hmm? Riaz. The student council's president was slightly surprised to see Riaz and Akeno from the opposite direction. And from their expression, the two seems need something from her. Oh hey, Sona. Oh hey, Riaz. The two are greeting each other while their queens are just bowing. What is it? It's a rare for you to come all the way here instead to the student council room, asks Sona curiously. Riaz gives Sona a smile nothing, I'm here just want to ask you about that Namikaz. The younger one. And Sona push her glass and make it glinted. What about her? That girl, is she really just a normal human? Riaz continued her question. What would make you to think that? Well, it's just there's something off with her. Sona looks at Riaz with calculating gaze before she sighed and says, no. She is a fallen angel, answered Sona calmly, but only to makes Riaz, Akeno, and Tsubaki tensed after heard that. Riaz's expression becomes serious. Why there's a fallen angel in this school? Moreover how? She paused for a second before a certain thought crossed in her head. Don't tell me, you're the one who let her. That's right Sona answered the unfinished question. As for why she is here, it's because she is on behalf of the fallen angel fraction, to observe the growth of the red dragon gauntlet in one of your servants. You're aware of it? Surprised Riaz, missing why the fallen angels want to observe her pawn sacred gear. Yes. As for how well, I have my own informant about that said Sona with finality, doesn't have intentions to give more. Riaz who saw that decided to ask another question. 
Still, why are you letting a fallen angel come to this place? If it's about your worry to the student's safety, then don't be. I guarantee that she is just come for observing and won't harm any people. Well, as long as they deserve it, the short-haired woman gives her childhood friend a reassuring smile. Also, there's a request from someone to keep secret her identity as a fallen angel. Rhea's become confused after heard that. Then why are you telling me this? Sona gives the red-haired girl a smile. Well, I thought it's not really that bad if I tell my childhood friends about it, right? Rhea's look at Sona for a moment before sighed helplessly. Right said the red-haired girl as she smiled back. Ah, but could you really keep it secret to hide Yukon and Argento-san? It seems they really insist about that one. Rhea's become serious again. Is this related to the ritual that they perform to Asia? Hmm? What you are talking about? Asked Sona in confusion. Maybe I should ask it to Naruto for the details later. He must know something about it. Continued Sona in her thought. Rhea slightly doubted Sona's confusion before she shook her head and decided to trust the girl in front of her. Nah, nothing. Ah, also about the older one. That makes Sona blinked in surprise. Naruto. What's about him? Asked Sona, which followed by a thought what kind of trouble that despicable blonde did now. Yes just, who is he? How the Gremory heiress asked it with a slight tone of anger, makes Sona chuckled. I can guess there's must be something unpleasant that happened between you two, isn't it? What's this thing about me? Hi. The one who being talked suddenly appeared like a ghost from a horror movie, hanging upside down from the ceiling in front of them, which makes the four girls startled at the unexpected. Can you not suddenly appear like that what are you, a random creature who often popping out from nowhere? Quickly yelled Sona. That's rude, I'm not a spawn monster from some RPG game you know. Said Naruto with a pout. Then don't do something that makes you look like them. The short-haired woman sighed for calming herself. So, what do you want? Moreover just get down already. Eee. I'm in the middle of cleaning now, complained the blonde-haired male as he pointing the sparkling ceiling. Thus do it normally said Sona as she gives the blonde male a flat stare. This is normal for me. Sona gives another few seconds flat stare before says, sorry, it's my fault for not thinking thoroughly. I'm forgetting that you are abnormal in first place. Now now, you don't have to point that out, said Naruto calmly while doing placating motion. Rias looks at the two in bewilderment before shook her head. Namaka's Naruto interrupt Rias who already calmed down. Hmm? Naruto turning around while still hanging from the ceiling oh, Justice Chan. You look healthy chirp Naruto that make a twitch in Rias eyebrows. Of course, I. Ah sorry, but can you wait a minute? I have a message from Sona's 1E Chan interrupt the janitor, not missing another twitch in Rias eyebrows. 1E Sama. Question slightly surprised Sona. Naruto turned back facing the student president again. That's right. Naruto grinning happily. What is it? Sarat Ann said she needs your help for her next TV show. Also, she would come to hear if you said no Naruto's grin become wider, seeing a grimace looks is formed in Sona's face. Blackmail ha said Sona in displeasure before she looks at Naruto. You seem happy about it. The grin on Naruto's face becomes wider. Of course. Seeing those displeasure faces is like a caffeine for me. Jai ha ha ha. Said Naruto as he coming down, before passing Sona then running away. Tsubaki. Shouted Sona as she put gloves from her pocket. Hi. The vice president didn't need to know what to do. She put her own gloves then rummaging something and giving it to Sona, before the student president throws the thing to the blonde haired janitor. All within four seconds flat. Bam poof. The brick is hit Naruto, before a puff of smoke and the log replaced him. TCH. You can't attack me with same method, Sona Chuan. Aaaa ha 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 comes from the voice of Naruto in the air, but the man is nowhere in sight. Geez that guy is really such a pain in the ass. Muttered Sona in distress. She shook her head before turning back facing at Rias. Sorry Rias. About your question before, could I answer it later? The A, ah, um. The red-haired girl could only nod after saw a different side of her childhood friend. She was surprised to see the short black-haired young girl who usually calm and collected, become very expressive now. Thank you said the Citrieris before she and her queen passing the two girls in front of her. Ah, maybe you can ask it directly to him. I'll send that bastard to your club room later. Just be careful of him. He is dangerous in a way said Sona without looking back. Dangerous? Ah, wait a minute Sona halted Rias who turned around to call her childhood friend. The one who being called stop but still not facing back. What is it? Namak is Naruto. Is he one of your peerages? The question is not only Rias who want to know the answer, but also Akeno and Tsubaki are also curious about it too. Haichu? A little push from Tsubaki to answer it. The Citriera stood still in there for a moment before she continues to walk while well keep quiet, which makes the Gremory heiress frown at the unanswered question. Now in different time and place, more exactly the occult researchers club room at after school, the usual members of that club are present and waiting for something. Knock knock, or someone. 
come in, a door in that place opened before revealed it was Naruto from behind of it. The blonde-haired janitor look all the member of the club with bored look, meanwhile the club members look tensed when saw him. Uh did any one of you saw someone named Yamada coming here? Asked Naruto out of nowhere. The others were confused about it. They look at each other, before Issei decided answered it no. We don't, Hirogami. Ah, okay, then the blonde-haired janitor nodded. Click. Then he closed the door again, May Kriya's and the others blinked at the unexpected gesture. Kriya's eyebrow is twitching when she realized the janitor isn't coming back. Kaneko, could you bring him back here please? The emotionless girl only gives her a nod before walk and going behind the door meanwhile all the member who waiting in the room could hear the commotion. Oh, Niko-chan. What's whoa? That was dangerous. Why hey? That one almost hit me ulo. Wait wait wait, can we talk over about this? They can hear Naruto who seems constantly dodging the white-haired loli. But whose order and emotionless voice also can be heard from behind the door. It's from Kaneko. I can't be helped then hop, ya, to. Bay, or ya, do. Bay, sha sha shat. Ya ta. Bay, then you wo. Can you say anything other than that? Bay, the other occult club member could imagine how the janitor is dodging Kaneko's attacks repeatedly. Enough. Take this to Yaki. Hakoyaki. Naya. Anpin. Nayaya. He now for the finishing blow, who's the cute K-I-T-T-E-N who's the cute K-I-T-T-E-N, the N-Y-A-A-A. All of the occult club members were surprised also confused at the same time. Just what happened and what's with those attacks that named after a dessert. Issei raised his hand as if have a question after heard something unusual from the Kuo Academy's masket. Oh but you, is Kaneko-chan purring in there? Is this what Sona means of dangerous? But thought Ria's who ignoring Issei's question. But you? Called the host of Drag. Issei. Ha ha Squeaked the brunette at the seriousness in his butchu voice. Could you go and get them back here please? Asked the occult club president. Oh okay Issei nodded at that, then start walking to the door. Issei-san, good luck supported Asia, which answered with a nod before he disappeared from their sight. The rest members are now waiting again while heard the pawn's attempt. Whoa, she's really purring a surprised voice from Issei can be heard. Oh, Issei. What's up? And this one from Naruto. Uh, no. It's just. Ah, that's right. Issei, didn't you say you want to borrow the new Tokyo DT Girls magazine? Ria's twitched her eyebrows after heard a suspicious name of magazine. Hmm? Ah, yes. Did you bring it? Of course. Here, you woo. Op I, op a, op I. Thank you so much, Hirogami. Don't mind it, just read it over there quietly. Aye aye sir. The devils in Klubroom now sweat dropped at how Naruto distracted Issei easily. It seems his lust win over your order, but you, said Yudo who chuckled at the brunette behavior. I know, sometimes it's annoying how easily he distracted by his carnal desire, Ria sighed at the failed pawn. Akeno called the Crimson Princess. Hi, Butchu Akeno accepted the unasked order and start walking elegantly to outside the room. Um Butchu-san, is Akeno-san going to be alright? Questioned Asia timidly. Don't worry, Asia. If it's Akeno, she would success. I trust her answered Ria's proudly. Ah, Asia seemed still unsure about it, but didn't say furthermore. When the door to the outside closed, they start to listen again. Rr, Namikaze Kun called Akeno with her usual catchphrase. Now. What will you do, Namikaze? Thought Ria's as she can hear her queen is already making a contact with the janitor. Oh, Himajima. What's wrong? It seems Ria's but you want to meet you now. The other member in the club room is now slightly leaning closer, curious at what kind of dirty trick their school's janitor would do now. Ah, okay. Only for them to face planted at how he suddenly agrees. Asia sighed at finally it would be over. Ria smiled in satisfaction. And Yudo shook his head because worrying for nothing. Ara. You drop something, Namika's Kun Ria's can hear Akeno's voice once again. Hmm? Oh, could you get it for me? And once again Naruto answered it. Hi ma. Another surprised voice from the black-haired beauty makes Ria's and the others curious. What is it? This is. Ah that. My friend gave me those S&M tools catalog yesterday. She said there's would be a big sale on their store and you could find rare tools in him. Himiji Mahei, Himiji Maguai he I Miji Yue, she lost on her own world well it can't be helped then, now I should move her in there, and voila. Now Niko-chan, who is the cute kitten again? NYAA, NYAA. You've got to be kidding me back into the room, Ria's massage her head. She can't believe her queen could be failed too. The grimmery heiress rose from her chair, decided to finish this by her own hands. However, before she moves from there, Yudo stopped her. But you, let me do this instead. Ria's look at her knight directly in his eyes. Are you sure? Hi. Replied the Bishounin confidently. Ria's give a thought about it. Her knight doesn't look like a pervert that always leering at every girl who approached him. Heck she is suspicious that he is a gay. He also doesn't have a fetish problem, not openly though. Okay, but be careful. 
The Udo nodded at his king before start walking to the door. Don't worry but you, I won't fail the Bashan and give his king a reassuring smile before he continued to walk outside the room. The last two member occult research club is now waiting again with heavy atmosphere, focusing on what's going to happen. That afternoon, Namika san let's begin, thought Ria's as she and Asia could hear Udo's voice behind the door. Oh, it's you. What is it? A tired voice comes from Naruto. Nothing, it's just Ria's but you is already tired of waiting a friendly tone comes from the night. Shing, is that Ria's blinked at the thought Udo unsheathed his sword. Wow 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 wow, wait a minute. Why did you bring that out? Don't mind about it. I just want to bring you back to the club room by force. Mama, there's no need for a violence in here. Don't worry, it would over quickly. How you know him? Hey Kiba, there's a crack in your sword. Sorry, but that excuse won't work on me. But one, Udo. Keep it up, cheered Ria's in her mind. No, no no. Just look, there, near the hilt. Ria's and Asia exchanged look at the silence. Um it seems you are right, Namika san. The loud sigh can be heard Kiba, how could you miss it? As a sword user, you should be ashamed of it that was from Naruto. Duh, the sword is not only a tool, they also a partner on a fight. Someone who can't even treat their partner as ha the janitor is sighing again, it seems you still have long ways to go, Kiba. You are right, Namika san. I'm sorry. Why did you apologize, you stupid knight? Ria's did a face palm after heard that. It's fine. By the way, did you come to the exhibition sword three days ago? Because I saw someone that looks like you in there. Oh. Did you went there too, Namika san? A rather excited voice comes from the night. No, Udo. Don't fall to his trap. Ria's pleaded in the club room. Of course. Did you saw that Muramasa sword? I never thought they would show it. A laugh comes from the blonde janitor. Yeah, and don't forget about the twin fang reminded you, Udo. The one from Medieval. The two blades with pure white steel like a snow. Yep. Yeah. That was fine swords. Now how about? Ria slammed her head to the desk. It seems she forgets that her knight is a sword freak. I won't fail my ass, groaned Ria's in displeasure as she heard the two blonde male chatting happily about swords. No, this can't be happened. I have to save them. Asia convinced herself in panic before run out from that place. No Asia, shouted Ria's, but it's too late as the bishop is already out from there. Maybe just maybe. She could do it. Aaaa Ano, Aaaa ah, Ano Aaaa ah, Ano. The Grimory heiress slammed her head to the desk again after heard Asia's stuttered voice. The girl can't even talk properly. So it's down to me, huh? Ria's rose up from her chair before walks to the door with a determined look. She should do this from the start. If you want to do something right, you have to do it by yourself. She would show the janitor for not messing with the Grimory heiress and her peerages. She is a Grimory, the Crimson Ruin Princess, little sister from one of the four great Satans. She won't let her peerage, her slave, and her family for be controlled by some janitor. Gripping the doorknob tightly, the red-haired devil twists it and set the stage for the battlefield. Ria's Grimory has precious friends to be saved in there. Ano Kaichu called a familiar feminine voice. What is it, Maguri? Asked the student council president. Is it okay to send him alone to the occult researches club room? Ma. Are you worried about Naruto-san, Tomo-san? This comes from Hanakai Momo with knowing look. You did your head hit something. Said Tomo with a flat stare to Momo's direction. Mama. The group of student council members now are walking to the old school building direction, to the place where Ria's Grimory and her peerage is in. The reason? Well, the Citri heiress thinks that this is the right time for introducing Saji and the others to Ria's new servants. But still Maguri is right. I should go with him in the first place, said Sona, who considering her decision to send Naruto alone. Ma, is Namakusan really that bad? Questioned Hanakai Momo confusedly. The worst, a nightmare, a hell teacher, comes from Sona, Tamo, and Tsubasa. Um, so he is dangerous after all convinced Saji while nodding. Really? But several of my classmates said he is a kind person questioned Kusaka Ria. Don't be fooled, Kusaka. He is just like that if you give him a job. Being a professional he says, explained Sona. So, is that means he is a pauper? I mean, it's the reason that he can't become a student right? Nomura Ruko joined the conversation. The student president has shook her head in denial. No. The bastard could buy several islands if he wants to, answered Sona calmly as she ignoring several gasps from her behind. Then Kaichu, why is he becomes a janitor then? Asked Tsubaki. Sona sighed before she answering it. He is just bored. Taking several tasks from the students is just one of the few things that he did to pass the time. One of the few things. Said Tomo curiously. Do you still remember how he turned you into a man? Questioned back Sona which answered by a grunt from Tomo. Thank goodness that the effect just lasts for three days. Three Fu King days for the embarrassing torture when doing things as a man. That's one of it. Experimenting, continued Sona as she and the others finally arrived in front of the old school buildings. Ma, let's back to how Namika San is bad to Gremory Sama and her peerages. I mean, what is the worst thing could be happened when he's in there? 
The others were startled when Sona, Tomo, and Tsubaki suddenly stopped before face palming. Hanakai, Momo, Momo-san called Sona, Tomo, and Tsubaki before they turned facing her. Hi. She's slightly nervous at how the three give her deadpan faces. You jinx it, said the three simultaneously. About what? Crash, the sound of shattered glass makes them turn their head to the source. In slow motion, they saw Rhea's Grimmery comes through the window like an action hero before she unfolded her devil wings. Hands that guarding her face now moved to cover her ears, showing the tears that leaked from her face. And oh 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 please don't say it anymore. I don't want to hear it. Stop calling me with that name whined the Grimmery heiress. From the same window, Akeno jumped and hugged the red-haired girl's waist. Calm down, but you, stop e it. Ria's who covered her ears seems doesn't hear it. Or moreover she doesn't want to listen to anything. Who but you san? Akeno san. Shouted Asia who also jumped and grabbed Akeno's legs now with cute desperately face. Nuo. Let me go. Cried Ria's who still whining in the air. Asia. Another figure jumped and grabbed the blonde haired girl's waist before revealing that it was Issei. A there's also Kaneko who now grabbed Issei legs while she is still inside of the building. The little girl's hands are holding each of the brunette's legs, while her own legs are for anchoring. She put the pressure on her left leg to the floor, and her right leg is under the window's frame, which is oddly located exactly behind of Issei's genital place at that time. Anyway, when the frame can't hold between how strong Ria's and Kaneko pulled each other. Crack, it breaks. Ah, makes the force in Kaneko's right legs directed on something in front of her. Yeah, in the nuts. Boo woo woo. Shouted Issei in high-pitched voice with tears is out from his eyes. The group from Sona's winced when heard that though. And let's not forget that Kaneko is a rook. Issei kun, please don't release it. Shouted Akeno. It's over. Issei Jr. is over, said Issei with high-pitched voice, while his eyes become pure white now. Issei san, please don't lose your grip, pleaded Asia. More like I'll lose my life first, continued the brunette. Sorry comes from Kaneko. Just please stop put the pressure on your legs. I beg you, said Issei still holding the pain. You know, some students call the place as an old school building for a reason. First, it's because the place doesn't be used anymore, and the second is because the place has some decayed woods on some spots. Well today, Kaneko's left leg is hit the jackpot. Crack. The floor was broken, makes the kitten instinctively use her right leg to hold her body, by slammed it to another place. Kaneko let out a puff of pride, happy that she success to balancing her body and forgetting she still have to pull Rhea's back to the building. So when something peeling her hands instead, Kaneko instinctively use her left leg and kick the window's frame near there without stint, forgetting it's already broken. Yep, the second round for leg versus nuts. There's not even a scream from Issei, but the foam that coming from his mouth is already told of what he has felt. Miraculously, the brunette's grip is still tight. Ah, that also makes Kaneko decided for letting herself being dragged because of unfocused. Slightly guilty for make Issei's condition worse and trusted the last member to pull them back. And that's how another hand grabbed the little girl's one. Issei, hang in there. I'll treat it later, said Yudo who hold them with great effort. I don't want to hear it from a man said Issei in a very soft voice. Ay -ay -ay ha 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 ha. How about that, Justice Chan? Interrupted by a rather familiar laughter that can be heard from inside the building. A student council member now saw Naruto who appears on another window with holding something wide in his hands, something like a paper. You are several millennia too early for challenge me, Justice Chan. Now, how about this ahem they could see their janitor taking a breath before seems like read something on that paper in mock monotone voice. First grader, Ria's Gremory. My name is Ria's Gremory. I really love robot. Especially the one from Super Sentai. Guess what? When I grow up, I am going to marry the robot also. And oh 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 interrupted Ria's as she's struggling harder than before. A sight that like a flying humanoid kites who constantly whining was responded by surprised face and three flat looks from the student council member. That said Sona, Tomo, and Tsubaki as they turned their flat look to Hanakai Momo. Make the white-haired girl laugh nervously. Aha ah ha ha Back to occult research club room, several things can be seen there. Ooh sulked Ria's cutely like a child in the corner. There, there Akeno comforted Ria's like a mother. Ooh this one was from Issei who holding her pain and shame while being treated by Asia's twilight healing. And you know. Don't worry Issei Jr., you'll recovered soon said Asia, while focused her healing treatment. Ooh and this one from Naruto who has three bumps on his head while kneeling in front of Sona who has a brick on her hand. There's also Yudo who panting, still exhausted for bringing his king back to inside the building. Pulling five people who struggling in the air seem not as easy as it looks. Meanwhile Kaneko is giving Yudo water as she is the one who didn't get an injury. Not physical though, remember how she purring like a cat who got drunk by a catnip in the janitor's lap. Oh, and most of the student council member who in the same room were looking at the unfortunate victims with pity and an understanding look, except for Naruto. 
Bradatata, ta 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 The ringtone can be heard in that room. And yes, it's still the same one from Final Fantasy Fanfare. It's mine, said Naruto makes the others who have nothing to do are focused on him. Hello, Naruto all in all, master of trades in here. May I know the victim I mean, the great person who will have my service. He's still saying that lame introduction. Thought the entire student council member. How you again they saw how Naruto sighed deeply. Like I said, just search it on some spare parts eh, you were didn't find Alaska. You ha ho who, I see fine, what did you want now? Hum hum said janitor who surprised on the first before nodding repeatedly. Well, why not using a cardboard box then? Of course ah, also watch out for the landmines by finished Naruto as he closed the call. What? Asked the blonde janitor when he saw the entire student council members look at him. Who is it? Asked Sona about the call. There's something off when he said cardboard box and landmines. Nah, nothing to be worried about. There's a guy who playing agent with me recently explained Naruto nonchalantly. Playing agent. Yeah, his name is Snake whatever. It seems he is searching for a Metal Gear or something, though I'm still confused why he searches it on spare parts store in Alaska. Such a dramatic guy several chuckles out from Naruto's mouth. And the cardboard box. The Citrieris can't be helped curious about that one. Oh, he says needs something that makes him undetected on nuclear facility. And you suggested that. Ask Namura Ruko in bewilderment. What can she say? An agent that infiltrating a nuclear facility with using a cardboard box and didn't get noticed. Yeah, sure. That's right. Chirp Naruto happily. Sona shook her head at that. Leave it to her other childhood friend for a bizarre idea. Thuff a certain agent in Alaska decided to try the method. And it works. So, what brought you all here? Questioned Naruto who using a healing spell to nurse the bump. Ah, that Sona look at the Rias and her peerages once again. Let's wait for them to recover. Okay Naruto nodded in agreement. Tough he actually doesn't care about it. One recovered peerages L-A-T-E-R. And what brings all of you here? Questioned Rias while take a glance at Naruto once a while, still wary of him from what happened before. Sona gives her a polite smile as she explains it. Nothing. It's just a greeting, since you have some new servants she finished with looking at Asia, then Issei before back to Rias. Servants don't tell me Issei's eyes widened at the new revelation. Sona facing the brunette with still polite smile. You maybe know me as the Sido Kaichu, Sana Shitori. However, my real name is Sona Citri, heiress of the Citri clan. And yes Kaichu pushed her glasses and make them glinting again. My servants and I are also a devil, she also gives him a mysterious smile in the end her sentence. It is me or she gained a new habit. Muttered Naruto for himself from the sideline. For the next moment, the blonde-haired janitor decides to ignore how Issei surprised about there are other devils in Kuo Academy, before Saji throw a snide remark about the brunette ignorance. He grabs a popcorn from his pocket dimension, then munching the flakes lazily, makes Kaneko who noticed it decided went to his direction, and ignoring the others who focusing on the two male pawns that start arguing. Naruto feels the gaze from the white-haired lowly in front him. He decided to move the popcorn to several directions, which make her following it intensely. Want? Asked Naruto, who answered with a nod by Kaneko. He patted the place beside him before she sit on there and starts lazily munching the popcorn together while watching the argument with flat looks. The two saw how Saji and Issei who take turns to squeeze each other hand with all their strength and make the two coir of their respected clan, side at their behavior. Rias gives Sona a tired smile. You must be having a rough time. In addition, Sona give Rias a matching smile as she says, No shit, Sherlock. The others blinked at the unexpected answer. Even Naruto and Kaneko stopped munching their popcorn. I I mean. You must be having a rough time too corrected Sona awkwardly. The student president coughed once and continued. Anyway, I was planning to go to his place this month. It seems my servants is ready to get a familiar, eh? I was planning for going to there too. Said slightly surprised Rias. There's a silence after the two found a problem. Hum this is troubling. He is only available for once a month, said Sona as she forms thinking pose. Rias smirked when she got a resolve to the problem. Then, how about deciding it with a duel? A duel? Sona is surprised at the idea. Yes, the winner gains the right to commission him. Are you talking about raiding Georgia Kaya? Before the student president finished, something hit her forehead. It's popcorn. You're not an idiot, so don't act like one. All of them turned their head to the source of that bored tone and found their janitor and the school mascot eating popcorn near the window. There's no one here that would give you two the permission anyway, continued Naruto. What do you mean by raiding game, Hirogami? Ask Issei who seems confused about the situation. Naruto pointed his finger at Rias. Ask that to Justice Chan later, said Naruto in same bored tone while ignoring a shout don't call me that. From the Gremory heiress. The blonde janitor yawned and put his palm on his back head before leaned to a wall, giving the rest of popcorn to Kaneko so, seems like you have an idea for this problem, Justice Chan said Naruto. 
Like I said, don't call me that. And yes, I thought that we could settle this through sports, said Riaz, who annoyed by the justice remark. My see, said Sona as she adjusting her glasses. By what, where and when she finished it with a sly smile. Riaz answered the gesture by her own smirk. Tennis, on the court, tomorrow morning. I understand giving a nod, Sona start to walk out from there. Then, see you tomorrow but before she passed the door. Sona, wait stopped Riaz with serious look. What is it? You still haven't answered my question this morning. About whether Namek is Naruto is one of your peerage or not this time, beside the kings and queens from each peerages is startled at the question, before they looked at the person who being talked about. Like I said, what? Asked Naruto not being bothered a bit. Someday the other now focused back to Sona, who has a cold gaze towards Riaz. I'll answer it, when we have a rating game between you and me as the opponent is what Sona said before she leaving that place with the other student council members that following her. There's a silence in that room. No one said anything after the Kuo student president left. Just how difficult it is to say yes or no for that question is in the thought of every occult members. But for Ria's Gremory, she knows something about why her childhood friends didn't straightly answer it. Something that needs time to be explained. Something complicated. Well, I think I should go now. A statement from the enigmatic blonde makes the rest of ORC members remembers that he's still in there. Wait, Namikaze stopped Ria's as she narrowed her eyes. Yes. Ria's looked directly at his eyes. Just who are you? Naruto blinked his eyes a few times before give her a mock thinking pose. Hum I am a devil, and well, you can say I also sown as childhood friends. Childhood friend. Slightly surprised Ria's before she gives him a suspicious stare. That must be a lie, how come I never heard about you from Sona? Naruto rose up from his sitting position and dusting his pants before he shrugged his shoulder. Of course you don't. That time, she was bounded by a rule to not reveal my existence after all, from whom? Right after Ria's asked that, she and her peerages were surprised to see the man suddenly disappeared in a blink of eyes, no. It was faster than that. For that question, all of them turned their head on the janitor who already opened the exit door. It's a secret. Then he out from there. Ria's give a thought about the answer. But you before Akeno called her worriedly when saw her king is disturbed. I'm fine. For now, we should focus on winning the duel. For Issei and Asia's sake she gives Akeno and her peerages a reassuring smile, which is answered by a couple of nods from them. A commotion occurs in the next morning at Kuo Academy's tennis court. Apparently, the first and the second most popular girl in their school would have a match against the third and the fourth in a tennis match. All the students who admired each team are already occupying the second best place in there. Near the fence of course. Haya. Sanasama. Comes from the girls who saw their object of admires. Iwuo. Akeno Wanisama. Comes from the boys who saw their object of lust. Cola, coffee, crackers, caramel. We also sell cupcakes, come on buy it. This one is come from Naruto who dressed as a walking vendor, while beside him is middled or known Nanari as her disguise in front the students of Kuo Academy. Ha ah, why should I do this quietly whine the girl who dressed same as Naruto. It's better than doing nothing. Besides, one third of the sales from these goods are for your allowances. You said you wanted right. Explained Naruto. Yeah I said that hmm. Hey, if I only get the one third, what about the rest? Asked Middle suspiciously. For me of course, her eyebrow is twitched after heard that you cheapskate. The retort is just shrugged by Naruto a ah, I wouldn't do this if it's not for that new shoes whined the fallen angel. What shoes? Questioned Naruto. Girls things. Don't ask it. Now, where is my free ticket of this boring job the last one was said by the fallen angel, while narrowed her eyes to search someone. You planned something again? Asked Naruto curiously. Aha. Uh -huh. Being a fallen angel has a merit to you know. For example, we could deceive some human to gain our own profit easily. Though sometimes, we could do it to a devil too. Well, only the weak or a fresh one of course explained middle with still looking for someone. Ohoo said him use Naruto. So, how about a match then? The winner takes all the money. Nah, don't want to. I still remember how Azazel Sama said that your luck is more frightening than the four great Satans, denied Middled, loud enough only for both of them to be heard. Um, she's smarter than her looks, thought Naruto who more amused by the fallen angel next to him. Then, how about this? If you win, you could ask anything to me. Anything. Emphasized Naruto on the last sentence. Anything. Why would Halt at Middle to think about the offer more through? Anything is he gives me a chance to know the detail of how the Lord is dead. Middle look at the blonde male who has a cunning smile on his face. She tries to search for anything that leading to a lie. Fine sighed the fallen angel when she found none. Yosh. Now, how about you going first? The blonde haired girl is looking at the man once again suspiciously, before she turned her head to search her ticket. Ah, there she is said Middle when she found the person. She takes a deep breath before shouted the name. A C is on. Eh? The one who called is turning her head to the source, along with several students who also heard it. 
the devil janitor and the fallen angel waiting at the former nun who walks to them now. Yeah, Asia-san. Greeted Middleth with her fake persona when saw the blonde with green eyes arrived in front of them. The Nari-san Asia gives a bow along with a smile before she turned her head to the left. Ah, na narito san You also in here stuttered Asia with nervous a gesture. It seems she becomes more wary of him after the previous encounter. Naruto give the girl a nod before he decided to go to another place. Then, I'll go to there now. Jana, Nanari-chan, Argento-san. Hi, Ani-chan. Replied Middle cheerfully. You um. Naruto-san and a nod from Asia. The janitor walking to a nearby tree before going behind a tent starts to observe the conversation. With Middleton ASIA. Are you okay Asia-san? Your face seems pale, questioned Middleton fake concern. Asia shook her head. No nothing. What are you two doing? The girl asked back while looking at Middleton's attires. The former nun looked at the younger Namikas, who wears something like a walking vendor, as stood in the midst of students. She also carries a backpack in front of her that has full of snacks. Ah, this I just helping Ani Chan to sell this goods, explained Middle cheerfully. Asia smiling fondly at her friend Nanari san, you are really kind, aren't you? For helping your Ani san is. Ahaha Middle sheepishly rubbing the back of her head like a child. The way he is in the thought of several students who saw it. Ah, just hear this Asia san. Ani Chan said half of the sales are for my allowance, but he's so stubborn when I say I don't need that much. You stupid Ani Chan whined the fallen angel with a pout. Eh? Why not Nanari san? I thought it was a good thing, questioned Asia while well, there are more students who also focused on the conversation. Middleton is looking at the ground shyly w well why you know, the reason I come here to this place is actually so that I could be with Ani Chan. But a longing expression is formed on the fallen angel's face now. Recently, he seems to take more jobs and always come late because of it. I don't know why he's doing it. But whatever it is, I don't care. I just want to be with Ani Chan. I don't really need money as long as he's with me continued the girl with sad yet honest gaze that makes people around going all. Asia grabbed Middle's hands before speak with encouraging tone Nanari san I think Naruto san has his own reason. Someday he will tell you about it, I'm sure of it. Middle gives her a reassured smile and nodded um. You are right, Asia san. A determined smile was formed on Middle's face. I think I should help him more from now on. At least, I don't want to be a burden to Ani chan anymore. She paused before continued with a sad smile while have a faraway look. Not after that. Nanari san trailed off Asia as she looks at the different expression from her friend. I am she closed her eyes before facing the former nun. His little sister after all, right? Finished middle by giving the former nun a beautiful smile with bubbles and sparking lights that radiating from behind her. It's not only the long-haired blonde, but also all the students near them is touched by that. Nanari san. I'll help you too, no. Let me help you. Said Asia forcefully. Yeah, me too. Pound me in. I want to help too. Is what several students said. The boys have determined looks, while the girls are soft smile. But, I don't mind it. Interrupted Asia. Yeah, me too. Don't worry about it, Namaka Zamato. Several students lose give middle to reassiring smiles. You all thank you very much appreciated middle while wiping her moist eyes. Yosh. Let's do this, you guys. Said a random boy that followed by a chorus of oohhhh. By the others. All the students cheering, Middle turned her head facing at Naruto direction. Half of her face is shadowed, eyes become half-lidded, and an arrogant smirk in there. A scoff comes from the fallen angel. But N-A-R-U-T-O. Naruto gritting his teeth at how Middle manipulating the students. Damn. She pulls the students' feelings to the max by giving a false kindness excuses as the base, before turned it into sad mysterious past. A bead of sweat trailed from Naruto's temple. After the students have their own delusion about what kind of bad things that happened to her, she finished it full blow of innocence, thought amazed Naruto. He's impressed with how the fallen angel could say that big bullshit story with so much emotion. This girl she's good. Continued Naruto before take a deep breath to make him calm down. An amused sigh out of the janitor's mouth looks like this is my lost is what she wants me to think. But, be facing his own goods which actually half from the supposed amount. With an evil grin on his face that makes Yagami light from D-Note would mistook Naruto as his brother, he says the famous line. Just as planned. Whoa there are so many snacks in here, said a random girl at middle place. It seems they already noticed the amount goods in middle spender backpack. Now, it's time for my counter-attack, thought Naruto who start to walk to the fallen angel direction while smirking inwardly. They ah, so it was you after all, Ninari-chan said Naruto with helpless tone, not missing a twitch in middle eyebrow. Hey, Naruto-san questioned Asia as she and the other students are looking at their janitor now. Naruto keep walking until in front of Middle before he slowly starts putting the goods in her backpack to his own. I already told, didn't I? That you don't have to work. Just do what you want and go play with your friends. You're free here. 
said Naruto with soft tone and kind gaze. Naruto-san, what do you mean? Asked Asia confusedly. In her childhood times, Nanari is different from the other kid. She always took her father's strict decisions obediently and never complained about it. I was worried because it's not what she wants, not her desire, and when I'm sorry, I can't tell you further more about it, said the janitor, as sad gazes formed in his face while still taking the goods from Middle Backpack. Hi, said Asia while looking at Middleton curiosity. I'm sorry, Nanari-chan. I didn't notice that you were lonely. I'll try to reduce my work and part-time job hours from now on. I won't work until dawn again continued Naruto before he stopped putting the goods and starts patting Middleton's head. Naruto-san said several girls who touched at the gesture, some even let out an admiring sigh. But you know as long as I could see your smile I don't mind if I have to sacrifice myself. Finished Naruto with a dazzling smile while a gentle breeze waving his hair. His expression is not only makes Middleton Asia being fascinated, but also all the female students who saw it have a blush in their face. Ah just for a reminder. That all dramatic stories Thinji are not real. It was created with full of deceit and ulterior motives. Thank you. Indeed. Such a pair of his holes. Naruto-san. Shouted a random girl who suddenly grabs his hand. Hi. We will help you too. Said the girl with a collective of nods from the others. He gave them another smile that makes the girls H-A-W-A-A-N before said sorry, but I don't want to bother you all. Don't worry, we are not bothered by it. Right you all. Convinced the girl forcefully which answered by a chorus of H-A-I from the girls. Naruto released the hold and take a few step back before give them a nod. Thank you. For knowing that Nanari-chan has good friends, I'm relieved to hear that, Naruto-san said the girls with still an awestruck face. Nevertheless, it's different from the boys. D.C.H., bastard, go to hell, popular guy, muttered them with full of hate. Not that Naruto missing that, but he can handle it. He turned to the boys and bowing. Thank you, I'm sure my little sister would be happy too before he looking at middled. Right, Nanari-chan. His words make the boys looking at the one that being addressed. Eh? Ah um, being called suddenly, Middleton was surprised and nodded shyly while looking the boys once a while. The cute girl who blushing after saw you. If someone who doesn't have an experience about love and relationship, they would misinterpret it as the girl has a feeling for you. And unfortunately, for most of male students in Kuo Academy don't have it. They don't mind it, Namikaz-san. Why yeah, it has become our duty to help each other. Leave it to us, namikaz Amado, is what several male students said with their own cool pose. Alright, you guys. Let's help them said a random boy who taking middle's vendor backpack before being answered by Yuwoo. By the other boys. Okay, girls. Don't lose to the boys. Said a random girls that also took a vendor backpack from Naruto before a chorus of hi. From the other female could be heard. They start organizing their job before start helping the Namika's siblings selling the goods. Naruto-san called Asia with quiet tone. What is it, Argento-san? Um, I'm sorry. It seems I was wrong about you about many things, said the girl nervously. Nah, it's fine. Everyone could make a mistake after all. Moreover, I'm grateful that my little sister has a friend like you, said Naruto honestly. A beaming smile appeared in Asia's face. Hi. Then, I should start help selling this too, said the former nun before she going to another direction. While the others are busy, Naruto and Middled have their own conversation. DCH. This one is coming from Middled. HMPH. Thou shall never win against me. Remember that, foolish little bird said Naruto in high and mighty tone. Hi hi sighed middle tiredly when the blonde male pointed that out. Though, at least I don't have to do the job anymore. Naruto blinked at that. It seems he's forgetting that it was what middle wants in the first place. She's right about that a chuckle is out from his mouth. What is it? Asked middle when she heard it. Nah, nothing. Just thinking now we will get money without doing anything Dismiss Naruto. Hey, you're right. Meanwhile on another PLAC, there's a girl with reddish brown hair with an antenna on the top, a girl with short blue hair, and a long white haired girl who watching the display with several reaction. Idiots, all of them. Don't realize being manipulated said Tomo with flat stare. Mm, so this is what Naruto sensei said about manipulating the enemy on a battlefield, muttered Tsubasa while nodding. Ma, such a lively siblings the two girls beside her are turning their head to facing Momo. Seriously? Said surprised Tomo. Mama dismissed Momo easily. Momo-san, are you okay? Did you catch a cold or something? Asked Tsubasa worriedly. Mama, why are you keep saying that phrase since yesterday? Now Tomo give the white-haired girl an odd look. Mama, I'm trying to build my own character now, explained Momo calmly. Can any of you tone down your voice? I'm trying to focus in here, said another feminine voice that makes the three snap their head to the source. Ria since when you're here. Moreover, who's doing the judge in Kaichu's match? Aren't you the referee? A rapid question comes from Tomo. 
Since the beginning, and I asked Haruko-chan to replace me, said Kusakuriya, who writing something in a notebook that she hold, while locking her gaze on the two Namikas who currently talking to each other. Ah, uh, Riyasan. What are you doing? Asked Tsubasa. Ah, this. I'm just writing of how the younger Namikas is manipulating the students with sad story, before the older one is supporting it with siblings' love story. And I must says, I became more and more amazed by Naruto-san. It seems his family has a talent for weight. What is that? Explained Ria before she saw something from the two Namikas. The other three girls turned their head and found what the treasurer saw. All the other students are selling the goods, the Namikas siblings who stood alone are grinning mischievously. There's dark purple aura that surrounded them. Kukuku chuckled the two Namikas that makes the four girls gulp in fear. The appearance a long straight black haired man with snake like face that appeared behind them is didn't help to ease the girls. That was wonderful. Said Ria who riding faster now. Such an amazing technique astounded Tsubasa at the display. Am I the normal one in here? Tomo face palmed at her friend's reaction. Mama the author actually confused for why bother to write Momo's reaction. Anyway, two things happened on that day. First, the match between Sona and Ria's is ended with draw. Second, Naruto and Middled having one hell of party on the night. Using all the money from the sale of their sold out goods. All of it. When they realize their mistake on the next day, the two starts blame each other in the next minutes before grieving it together. Such a waste of money.